I need to tweet. I forgot. There we go. Hello. Are we all in the right spots? Oh, it's all falling into place. I shouldn't have said that. What's wrong? Something's got to be wrong. I'll be. I'll look around and see what's wrong. Uh, but until we find out, hello everyone. Welcome to the Stalwart Initiative, and we're back for uh, D and D Five E Dark Matter Goodness Adventures in the Verse. And um, yeah, very very excited to be back this week. I just got done about half an hour ago, um, putting my hat in the ring. Is that the phrase? Hat in the ring? Something in the ring? Ring in the ring? Um, hat in the ring for the Dark Matter campaign that they're running on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, I gotta get those Dark Matter dice, and the GM screen looks pretty sweet. And yeah, have to get all the have to get all those goodies. So. Um, yes, it's a beautiful, wonderful book, and it's chock full of goodness. So if you haven't played Dark Matter, get out there and do so. You owe it to your... the the box comes with the well the box that comes with the book, dice, uh, battle maps, as well as a um, a short campaign called Conspiracy in the Stars, which is written by some awesome, awesome people. Uh, it's a great way to get introduced to Dark Matter, and I think you get the PDF at a certain level too check out their kickstarter it's awesome i think they've already been funded like three times over but it still matters yeah yeah earlier when i did it was it was like 130 something k and i really wanted to get to 200 so we can i can get the roll 20 stuff so we can all like over the channel i'll have um i'll have dark matter stuff in roll 20 and that would be super cool but um yeah so uh yeah thanks for joining us and let us go around and meet everyone and then we will uh, turn it over to our awesome DM Jarek, Jer DM Jarek, uh, DM Derek, and we'll get kicking. Uh, first up, uh, Taylor, can you introduce yourself and Ruby today, please? If you really want to get his knickers in a twist, call him DJ. <sighs> <laughs> I I get that right as best friend. No one else is allowed to do it. <laughs> the only one. Yeah. The only pass. Um, I am Taylor. I am playing a a gnome monk named ruby she's wonderful and uh she took wave gravity so she walks on the ceiling like a lot way more than any normal person should like lionel richie <laughs> <laughs> nice nice uh graham can you introduce yourself and arza to us please hi everyone i'm graham uh and today i am playing arza vosh a changeling rogue uh jumper who uh, is a rogue with everything that you love about rogues, plus the ability to teleport. Just nice. like Lionel Richie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, great. Now i got to find out a Lionel Richie reference real quick. Okay, so then we'll turn it over to Katie, who I'm sure has a wonderful Lionel Richie reference for her character, Val. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave you with that just... right on your doorstep. Let me just Google <laughs> Richie song. So hi, I'm Katie Quixotic. You can find me everywhere with Katie Quixotic. It's really good branding and it was totally accidental. I just really like that word. Um, I'm playing Val. She is a Kalashtar and is a Sepulchre Knight Paladin um, or Paladin Way of the Sepulchre Jerk. Sepulchre. Oh my God. Blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, and she's well, you already did dancing on the ceiling, but she doesn't do that anyway. She is uh, endeavoring to be a better mediator all night long. I don't know, that sounds so terrible. <laughs> that was the first song that came up. I was like, I'm going with whatever the first song is. Oh, dancing on the ceiling and then all night long. Good, good, good. I'm so glad that happened. No, that's perfect for um, Val. Val like comes into your bedroom and then pats your leg and goes, let's talk. And you're like, what? No, she's like, no, no, all night long. <laughs> Wow, I can't even. Nope, I'm not even gonna try to <laughs> to top that. That was um, yeah, very good, very good on the spot. Um, Kyle will be playing Zama, and Zama is a Evia Ra, so normal person, bird head, kind of weird and awkward, um, trying to find their way to enlightenment. I guess it would, I guess it would be the equivalency, and yeah. Yeah, really, really starting to dig the crew and even getting slightly comfortable in the ship that tried to murder him at one point. Um, so, yeah. And has no idea we're being followed by a giant thing of death. 1d8 mega damage. I'm ready. I'm ready to strafe. Let's How do it. How much trail mix does the ship have to fabricate <laughs> yes. in order for you to be okay? 
How much homer. mega damage can I take? Yeah. Uh, what are your hit points? <laughs> 20 something? Uh, you None. can take one fifth mega damage. <laughs> one, one fifth of one mega damage. Yes. Count me in. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll turn it over to, to Derek, our DM. And, Derek, uh, do you want to give us a little recap and bring us into Adventures in the Verse? Love to. Hi, everybody. I am Derek Sword. Uh, I'll save all my plugs for the end. I, at the top, though, I do want to thank um, Jillian of Midgard, who did our amazing character art and also made this shirt. And she's phenomenal. She's awesome. Um, so thanks to her. We'll, of course, thank her at the end. But we always thank her at the end. I want to thank her right at the top. Um, so welcome back to Ventures in the Verse, our Saturday 5e Dark Matter campaign. Uh, to catch you up, if this is your first session, welcome. Uh, our players found themselves in a bit of a cosmic pickle when they took a job from a well-renowned mercenary named Bullcreek Hammertooth, only for him to uh, get them on his ship and die as it exploded. They did survive, however, as he shot them off in a shuttle towards a strange planet where they landed immediately found a halfling gangster and were shuffled off to do work for him since they had nowhere else to go he's kind of trapped them in, in, in a deal uh he's he's trapped them in debt really by um giving them a ship but making them pay it off through work uh their first job was to get a ton of roaches off of a ship that had been marooned in the galaxy which they did only to find that the ship also had a um body snatcher aboard I apologize if you can hear my dogs. They're being loud assholes right above me. Um, the body snatcher They're being loud dis- darlings right above you. Oh, they're so cute. Uh, the body snatcher was dispatched with, and they did get the roaches on board. Uh, at what point, they were instructed to deliver it to a buyer. They went to a planet which is used primarily for as like an elven hunting reserve. Um, they handed off the roaches to the buyer a um, mysterious drow woman uh, and did a little bit of investigation uh, because this entire time Val has been having strange dreams every time that she goes to sleep where a, a high elf woman in a cloak has asked her for help and has given her forbidden dreams these these kind of well, foreboding is the word foreboding dreams of, of things that may come to pass but they're they're very cryptic and val through her her clashed her nature has even dragged in the other players and the other characters into these dreams so they have seen much of what she's seen as well only for them to find out that this strange woman is the missing princess heir to the rule of the entire elven empire the largest uh collection of people in the entire verse um so they did a little investigating talked to a dragonborn named blitz who gave them a little bit of information that how the princess went missing was under very mysterious and dire circumstances and that her return is incredibly important to the success of the empire. Uh, Not only as the fact that she's the princess and next in line, but it's also a sign of weakness that they can't even protect somebody that important. So all of that said, the players got back to their ship and blasted off back towards uh, Planet Nemo, where Red's Raft is. Uh, We, the audience, then saw that while they were on uh, Malice 5, the the planet where they did the drop-off, one of them might have been noticed. Noticed by some people who have been looking for them. Um, Arza has a bit of a sordid history and a, a, a variety of of sorted and questionable things in their past and there may or may not be some individuals um, looking for Arza and uh, even though Arza did check the ship just didn't check it quite well enough and uh, we know that their ship is being tracked as they travel back to their new home Uh, so with that uh, we will pick back up just as your ship Um, you don't have to do any rolls because you you did have the astrogation spell cast Um, so you have gotten back, you're, you're just outside of the, um, you're, you're maybe, you know, a few thousand feet uh, from from Nemo. So you're, you're taking your approach now, uh, you've got the coordinates to Red's raft so you can, you can travel towards it. It's just slightly on the, uh, on the other side of the planet as your approach. Um, is there anything you'd like to do before touching down? How long right. did the journey take? 
Uh, it was mere seconds. Yeah. Okay, that's With the right. Astrogation okay. spell, you you did a rift jump, um, which shrinks you down to like the size of a, a pinhole, and basically punches through the the planar existence of of this of space. It makes you travel through the void, um, and and transports you near instantly to your your goal. But you weren't too too far. Traveling from one end of the galaxy can take a couple of rift jumps. You weren't that far where you'll have to do several. Okay. Nothing then. I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm asleep. Okay. Um, yeah, you all touch down. It is uh, getting to be probably evening as as the planet's rotation uh, goes around the sun. Um, so there's, uh, I think we determined that there's like a, a purple hue that this sky takes in the evening. And uh, yeah, you touch down on the platform, this this large metal platform in the middle of this near endless ocean. Nemo is a primarily oceanic planet and uh, it's almost this floating space station really on this planet. So not a space station, a regular a water station. Sure. Uh, so you touch down, once again, the uh, metal landing gear comes out, successful landing, no, no serious issues. Um, your, your AI, Homer, has, has taken over uh, as autopilot. And the, uh, the bay doors automatically open. And uh, are, are any of you just walking out? Or I guess, where are you guys in the ship right now? Are, the, are you in your, your bunk if you're taking a nap? Yeah, I think uh, I am in my bunk. Okay. Sleeping, because I was running off coffee. Okay. I think I would be in the, um, like, at, at the helm, but not like I'm letting it do its thing, but just kind of watching. Yeah, you're in the Chewbacca seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably come up to the cockpit as well, uh, just to see what's, you know, what's going on and, and what we see whenever we roll in. Okay. I believe I was already up there. I don't think I would have gone anywhere else. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, so I, I guess I, I said the platform loaded, but that's not necessarily true. Did you all want to lower the platform, or you just want to stay on the ship? Um, let's, let's get it. Let's roll. Let's get out of here. Just probably let Red know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I can't remember if we actually talked about it. Uh, I think we hailed him. Thing. We hailed him on our way back, saying that we had oh, completed right. the deal. You did. That's yes. true. That's true. Okay. So, I mean, I'm asleep, but my OOC vote is we don't need to talk to Red. He'll talk to us if he needs us. Mhm. Mm oh yeah, yeah. I think he said something like that. Yeah, Val. Actually, when you say like. Oh, maybe we should go talk to Red. You do hear um, kind of like an, almost an intercom buzz throughout the ship, and uh, an image appears on one of the screens in front of you, the cockpit, and you see Red standing there. Um, what you see, like maybe the top of his head, but you definitely see the um, the vect and the, the well armed hobgoblin, and you kind of hear Red's voice like, "Hello, uh, are you are you going? You just gonna stay in there? I mean." <laughs> Do you want? Do you want? Uh, I, I'm I'm going to ask nicely. Would you like to open this door and have a, a brief discussion with the person who uh, very generously gifted you this ship? Is there like an intercom? Can I like push a button and be like, "Hold your horses, little man." Do you want to do that? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it uh, he. Y you do that. And uh, he doesn't get like an intercom on the other end, so you can just flat out hear what he's saying. He turns to the vector and he goes, "If I find out if that was that that little gnome, I'm, I'm gonna not blast it. I want to blast it. I'm not gonna blast it. Oh, I want to blast it. No, it's fine. It's good. She's right. I'm small. It's fine. She's small. What is she talking about? That's it. I. Oh. And you kind of hear like some pounding, like echoes through the ship. And he's like, "Um, all right. Not gonna ask politely." get out of the ship I'm on my way however I have a question when I arrive and I'm going to get up and I'm going to head back that way um, and like open whatever door he's at I mean yeah I'll follow her okay yeah you open the uh, cargo bay doors once again it lowers uh, down with the, uh, the hydraulic pistons on either side and uh, yeah red standing there is like great okay here's two of you did the rest of you die are, are they all dead now? Well, there are three here, but the the other one is asleep. 
I'm gonna... Did you say that you gifted the ship? Is it a gift now? Does that mean that the debt has been cancelled? I mean, it, it was, it was a gifted loan. I don't need to explain the way economics work on Red's Raft, okay? It's it's, it's Red's Raft. It's it's me. I am Red. This is mine. It's, I'm just clarifying. It no you, okay. It's not also, a apologies for not opening the door. I was unaware that you were waiting for us upon arrival, so we had just landed. Yeah, that's fair. I guess this is your first job. Uh, let me just say, let, let's have everybody together so I don't have to repeat myself. I hate doing that. Uh, so can you can you get the rest of your crew, please? Homer, can you have yes. Barza join us? Razzle, join us. Of course, I shall browse Razzle. And, um, Arza is, you're still in Razzle form, I believe. Um, Homer is able to kind of, like, travel through walls, um, as he, he kind of takes the an ethereal form from his hard light form. And you, you hear, like, a soft chiming. It's a very nice, um, like, alarm sound, not like any of the ones that your iPhone next, next, normally has on it. But, yeah, it kind of starts getting, like, progressively louder. And then you you feel like a little jolt of energy, not enough to do damage, but just a little, a little jolt. He's like, um, apologies. I don't know what name to use right now. Razzle, I will use that. R Raza. Is is that good? I don't know. Um, Red has asked for you to join him in the cargo bay, and Val is also requesting your presence. All right. Um. <laughs> Um, how was how long was I asleep? Um, maybe an hour. I we we time. All right, is weird that's in that's space. good enough. But give me a double latte. Uh, yes, with heart shaped foam, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll take that as I'm walking. I feel I'm gonna need it. Uh, and I'll get up. Uh. Look in the mirror briefly, make sure the uh, appearance is spot on, as usual. Mm -hmm. Maybe unmusty the hair, and I will head that way. Okay. Uh, are you changing your shift weave? Because as of last week, oh, we discussed it was a dress, that you were wearing it? like your ball gown. Mm, yeah, I'll, I'll change that uh, to okay. a to that usual. Uh... Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the undershirt, the overalls. It was, yeah, it was like overalls. It was a brown shirt with overalls. Yeah. Okay. And I'll keep the little tiny hat. <laughs> okay. Or the bow, I'll keep the bow. The bow, okay. Uh, great. Uh, so you all uh, meet with Red in the cargo bay, and he says, great, I, I'm happy to see you all have survived. I appreciate you doing business. You all earned me a lot of money, and you've got, well, you, you paid off, like, an eighth of your debt. So, good job, I guess. Uh, con okay, also, congratulations. Your first mission, you you did it. Uh, I, as a congratulations, I always like to take out my new employees for a drink. So if you would like to join me in the Top Heavy Mermaid, uh, let, let's get some fruits. Let's chat. Let's get to know each other. You all just kind of showed up out of nowhere. I said, here's a ship. Here's a job. I mean, let's, let's know each other's favorite colors. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Green. Okay. All right, save it for drinks. Uh, it's okay. Um, we could. I'm. I'm gonna look to Val. Uh, could we get? Should we get this? Uh, brought to the shop and get those uh, additions added on while we're doing this. That oh, seems yeah, a reasonable I, idea. I see you did some scavenging, and he points at the massive light cannon, which is in your your cargo <laughs> bay. Uh, I see you found some stuff. Uh, great. We'll get. We'll get rocket to. Uh, to take a look at all that and uh yeah, maybe do some additions and yeah it's, he, he's good he's, he's good at that and uh maybe well, it, is, it is it is late he's probably already at, at the bar so we'll get him to do that tomorrow when he won't blow everything up he, he does this weird thing at night i don't know if you've seen where he blasting off again yeah he he jetpacks into the ocean i don't know how he gets back but he does every night. It is unsettling. He's got friends and love. Oh yeah, he says uh, rocket time. He do he does he does do that. I 
I don't know if you know, this ocean is full of horrifying things that would give you nightmares while they're eating you. And somehow that little thing survives. I, that's why I, I've wanted to fire him so many times for the drinking. I'm just so impressed he keeps coming back. I can't do it. Anyway, let's get drinks. It's on red. Mm. All right. And by uh, on red, do you mean that you're gifting us the loan of the money you used to pay for the drink? I won't add the cost of the drinks to your debt. Pinky promise. Yeah, sure. Pinky promise. Yeah, nobody breaks a pinky promise. Not even red. All right, I'll go with him. <laughs> Uh, I didn't trust this guy up until this point, but now I know he's a man of honor. <laughs> uh, Lockjaw comes like running up from inside the ship and uh, and jumps up to Razzle. Oh, oh <laughs> shucks. Uh, uh, really? Oh, jeez. Oh, golly. I'm going to scoop him up, and I guess I'm going to carry him, even though he's like the size of me. <laughs> we need to find some place we can acquire a leash. Uh, yeah, Red's Rap does have leash laws, so, you know, um... Is he small enough to fit in a bag? Because a lot of places with leash laws, if you can carry your dog in a bag, you're, you're good. Yeah, if you have one of those Ikea totes, you can... Um... That makes me think of the people who are like, okay, you can't take the dog on the subway unless they right. fit into a bag, and so he's got the, like, whole pimple in a big-ass duffel with bag. With holes on like... the bottom for the feet to poke through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, um... Lockjaw is small, but technically so is Ruby and Arza. <laughs> so if Lockjaw could go in a bag, so could Ruby. Um, <sighs> but actually, when you say that, um, Red kind of looks to the the Hobgoblin, and he goes, hey, uh, you, you give, give him the bandolier without all the, yeah, the one without all the bullets on it. And we'll, you, you know, yeah. And, the Hobgoblin's got, like, um, very, like, Rob Liefeld with, like, clips all over him and pouches and everything. And he takes off this, this strap bandolier uh, with several clips on it and kind of clips it around Lockjaw's neck. And it actually makes a, a decent kind of on-the-go leash. He's like, oh, that's, there you go. You got a, you got a leash. Follow, follow the law. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, now you can uh, at least hold on to that strange thing oh, can i roll this... animal handling well, i was gonna say i'm just gonna hand the leash to ruby right now because i don't want to carry watch <laughs> off uh ruby i won't make you roll an animal handling check to have this this thing on the leash it is domesticated so it's not gonna tuck you but it does look up to you and kind of like tilt its head a little bit i Ooh. just want him to love me more than ours <laughs> <laughs> i well i just want you... my rolls to be lower <laughs> if you do something later to, to win this dog's the crocodogs uh, loyalty and affection we can we can try some new roles yeah, yeah. just hope I don't action. take a, a, a warlock pack to make my pack familiar okay. uh, so uh, yeah you you all go with uh, with red he starts walking out the, um, the deck juggernaut and the hunt goblin on the other side of him are you all following yeah I I, I think it would be rather rude for us not to follow yeah. Okay. Uh, beep beep. He, he leads you to uh, Top Heavy Mermaid. So it's, it's it's very like um, beach bar kind of. Even on this this very metal raft, it has like like torch sconces and like fairy lights and things like that. And uh, the the nautilid behind the bar. I didn't mention this before because I couldn't think of it, but they absolutely are wearing a lay. And. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's very like festive in there, and once again, uh, for those of you who know Nelix, uh, Nelix is behind the bar. Uh, you know they're a bartender because of course they're polishing the glass, um, and Nelix is a, a large novel in, in a uh, like a giant diving suit, like a big daddy for much. And Red leads you illegally to... distinct for the purposes of copyright. They don't have drill hands. You can't sue us or Mage Hand Press. Um, but Red leads you to a bar on the table and kind of takes a seat and uh, just, he's always, it seems, flanked by these these two, the Vect and the Hobgoblin, uh, which is hard to read expressions on either of them. They're just like, always kind of there. Uh, but he, he kind of 
snaps his fingers towards Nellix and kind of points to all of you. He's like, round for everybody. And Nellix just gives him a little wave. And uh, how, do, how do you all sit in this? It, it's, um, it's not On my booth. butt. <laughs> all right. I'm not a <laughs> bad question to ask, I guess. <laughs> um, so you all sit at the in the chairs kind of around him. And he's like, okay, so I figured we might as well, like I said, get to know each other a little bit. Um, you all know that my name is Raft. Or t- <laughs> Raft. <laughs> no, my name is Red. This is my Raft. Uh, it is where I predominantly do business, which of course you all know uh, a little bit about me. My favorite color is not red. It is, in fact, uh, aubergine. And uh, uh, these two, you, you of course know K1LR. Your husband. I, I, metal husband and uh, he, he is a faithful deck juggernaut who uh, I acquired some years back and this uh, I'm not sure you, you actually know uh, my, my hat goblin friend here this is Grip Scanner and uh, he, he's uh, one of the deadliest warriors uh, from the, the Orc Hard Goblin Wars uh, and he got tired of it so he, he decided to come work for me just like you all came to work for me and I do business. I'm, I am directly connected to uh, the firm, if you all are familiar. And uh, yes, we've got connections here and there. And uh, it allows me to do uh, the, the business like I have had you do so far. Uh, so I would like to know about each and every one of you. Uh, and he, he points to Zama first. And just, uh, Zama, the, the bird-headed man. You're, you're an avial ra, uh, which I know a little bit about. Uh, very religious folk, really like the sun. Uh, you are different, though. You don't see a lot of, you don't see a lot of Aviara uh, venturing too far outside the Holy Lands unless they uh, are the proselytizing. So, uh, what, what, what brings you out into the stars? Um, as as he's talking to Zama, Zama will, like make a uh, short bursts of eye contact and then just kind of like look away. Um, um. Yes, I found that studying um, so close to Old Oon was not yielding the things I needed for enlightenment. So I, I came out to uh, to find a way to make my path better. And then I found them, and they're really cool. And... Uh, and I, th- I think, yes, I think this is where I'm supposed to be, Mr. Red, Mr. Raft. Yes. Yeah, cl- close enough. Uh, all right, well, yeah, it, whether it's where you're supposed to be or, where, or, or not, it's where you are. So, you know, make, make the best of it. But, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I hope you find yourself. This guy, all right? It, yes. Like, awkward smile. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Yes. It is strange to see birds smile. You don't see that too often. The lack, the muscles work. lack of the lips. Yes, it really puts yeah. people off. Yeah. Uh, he, he kind of looks down the line to, to Ruby. <laughs> uh, I, you know, Ruby, a gnome uh, from the flotilla, probably, I'm guessing. Uh, what's what's your deal? <laughs> I mean, why? I hear the flotilla is a nice place. You got a lot of gnomes there, a lot of space. Uh, no pun intended, but uh, what, what brings you out into the verse? She's just gonna deadpan. She's gonna say, Most gnomes don't leave. I left. That's fine. <laughs> I'm used to bouncing from place to place, but I'm. Zama is my friend, and I don't think I could leave him if I wanted to. Oh. Okay. Pat, well, pat, uh, pat, 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 pat. Hope you don't get split up. I'm, I'm not. I mean, that's not a. Yeah, I'm just. I'm trying to. That, I don't know what to say to that. That was. Fine, I guess. Okay. And my favorite color is green. Oh yeah. No. Th- thank you. Uh, Zama, I'm sorry. What was your favorite color? Oh, fuchsia. F- fuchsia. I yes. Okay. Uh, undergarments that are fuchsia. They they feel better. Oh, Le- well, less chafing. This is weirdly both too little information and too much. This is a strange concept. Oh, okay. 
and it uh, at this point um Nelix does come over and uh brings over uh, drinks for everybody uh zama yours does have uh, peanuts in it hmm. compliments and, to the chef thank you Nelix. yeah Nelix gives you like a thumbs up because they can't wink um and Red kind of looks down the line then to uh, uh, Razzle. Says, Razzle, it is so lovely to see another halfling. Uh, tell, tell me all about yourself. Tell me about your travels. Are you are you familiar? Are you uh, connected to the hearth stations at all? Does your family have a hearth station? Uh, um, I'm going to twiddle my thumbs a little bit <laughs> under the table. Uh, I don't really know my family that well uh wasn't great growing up kind of grow up uh all over you know traveling the stars keeping out of trouble as best i can uh <laughs> my favorite color is gray okay very neutral all right Okay. Uh, yeah, no, uh, good. Well, yeah. Uh, and also, if any of you, if while he's bringing this up, if you wanted to know more about when he said the firm or what hearth stations are or any of that, um, go ahead and shout out and we can do history checks about that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's it's just extra flavor. Yeah. It's not pertinent to the conversation. And then uh, finally, he looks at Val. He says, and uh, Val, you, you, are, you are somebody I've wanted to know a lot about. You are. Uh, for a simple good night. I mean, you don't see a lot of you away from, you know, the, the, the stars, or you don't see a lot of you away from mall stations. I mean, and you certainly don't see a lot of you uh, hanging around with unscrupulous folk. Right? But well, what, what's your deal? What's your story? Someone's morality is sometimes a matter of perspective. I oh. was unable to fulfill my duties properly and was relieved. <laughs> it is difficult to take, to not take a side when something seems to clearly be the c proper course. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, this has been, uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, enjoy your drinks. Uh, wait, suppose... wait, 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 wait. I have a question for you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here to answer your questions and talk. We're having a nice little chat, please. Oh, okay. All right. Just making sure. Uh, how did you acquire this raft? Uh, it belonged to my family. Uh, it belonged to my uncle. Uh, but uh, he and most of my other family died in a uh, media strike. A very unfortunate, totally not uh, orchestrated media strike. So... Yeah, I, I came into possession of this raft, and uh, possession of his, uh, uh, his his clientele, and uh, yeah, he, that, it's mine now. It's mine, and you can't have it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's serious. I don't. I. I. I'm good. Thanks. Did you orchestrate the media strike? Meteor strike. I'm sorry for your loss. An insight check. <laughs> I roll Nate for insight. Yeah. That's a uh, real tragic. Um, from as one half into the other, I I am truly sorry that happened to you, Sugar. Sugar. I appreciate you know uh, yeah you know so I I, I also have been orphaned. Uh, Arza, he's being straight. R Red is telling you the absolute truth. Uh, Ruby, he's not being fully open about everything but he's you're not sure if he's fully lying but you're like ah, it, his, everything that comes out of his mouth is just like like slightly salted with lies I, I'm not sure if, if you can believe everything he says but I also don't know if that's a flat out lie or if it's uh, if it's just a partial lie or a partial truth I would like to see what I know about the firm by the way yes uh, history check would my background help me in any capacity? Remember what your 
your, your background just background, or being just like your in just just working in the moths i don't know like if they're more on the unscrupulous side of things would i have come into contact with them while doing work um as, as a peacekeeper um well this is this is just val remembering something um yeah so, so unless val's reading your mind which which you can do uh i'm gonna say assist would probably be hard unless you're like leaning in and uh, but I will give Val advantage because, yes, as a peacekeeper, the, the firm would be, it's one of the major organizations in reverse. 21. Yes. Uh, the firm. Pull that up. It is a, an organized criminal uh, enterprise, essentially, which is primarily run uh, by halflings. Uh, at its first blush, it can be hard to tell that any part of the firm's dealings is illicit. After all, its contracts are watertight checks never bounce and its lawyers are impeccable those in the know however understand that for all its business accoutrement the firm is the largest organized crime syndicate in the verse uh so it is involved in everything from hacking weapons trafficking elaborate heists uh it hires short-term contractors or long-term contractors like yourself um it has uh, intensely shadowy dealings that are mostly operated through hearth stations um, which I'll go ahead and tack this on while we're at it. Perth stations are these like interstellar motels, these these waypoints um, aside from moths that are operated by halflings, and uh, the halflings are like the mafia of the verse, which I think is an interesting twist on them for dark matter. Uh, they're very unassuming because of their their stature and their reputation at being because hearth stations are also incredibly safe. Most people use hearth stations; they're not using moths. So the idea that you can stop there for, you know, a warm meal and a soft bed, but then at the same time, you know, there's somebody getting their fingernails pulled in the basement. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Wow. So it's like the Eberron thing where they're, they got that special touch, but also with murder as well. Special bad touch too, yeah. though. That's <laughs> yes. the... <laughs> yeah. yeah, Eberron does have a direct connection to that as well, where, um, yeah, there's an entire, like, Dragon Mark family, which operates like all of the organized crime but then they also are the ones who are like i think it's house Kandala, and they're like oh also we have all of like the hotels and we also operate the houses of healing we're we're just we're here for the public good you know it's it's like tony soprano saying he's in waste management you know that's the, the <laughs> yeah. so that that's what you would know okay mr red what i'm kind of curious why did you tell uh val that were unscrupulous. I think that's a... If I remember correctly, that's an insult. Why would you say that about us? Oh, I, I, I guess I did not mean it as an insult. I myself am without scruples. Uh, I just mean that you all actively committed a crime uh, just a little bit ago. And uh, you, you all have been... I, I suppose, Zama, you are the, the exception to that. Uh, there's something about Razzle. That, that I don't fully trust, and uh, Ruby, I have pulled up her background, and I know that she's not telling me everything, uh, but uh, it's, it's fine. I respect that. I respect somebody who knows how to use computers in a way that uh, benefits them. So, uh, no, I I just met you. You all are criminals now. You absolutely are. You are, you are marauders of space, and to see a uh, sepulchral knight even, I mean, you told me you met with a Valkyrie hammer to to even meet with him in the first place is an act of acceptance to the underbelly of the galaxy. And uh, it's, I, I, it was just strange to see, uh, it was strange to see a peacekeeper uh, rubbing elbows with, with somebody like Wolfric. I've always had different opinions on what can keep peace than some of the others. Yeah, that's fair. I respect that. And, you know, I appreciate you all doing a good job, too. Uh, did, I, I suppose I was only able to check in every now and then. Uh, did your mission go well? Did you have but, any hiccups? Well, weren't there two missions, technically? I mean, our mission was to retrieve the cargo. I and suppose, whatever yes, crew members were there. Essentially two missions, uh, more or less. Kind of like uh, you commissioned, or you, you did a mission uh, one, and then mission subsection A. Uh, it's like a two-part question. That sounds like that's that's fair. Uh, not to change the subject, but uh, I've been thinking a lot about Volkrieg. Uh, 
rest his soul, I guess. The space, Pour whatever people worship. Yeah, uh, uh, K1LR pulled one out for Volfreak. And K1LR's hand just like, <laughs> like twists, like, yeah, 180 <laughs> degrees. And Nellix is like, come on! Do you happen to know what job Volkrieg last was on? Or anything like that? Because it seems odd that he'd be specifically targeted by humans, right? Honestly, Volkrieg was not one of my contracts. He was in the past. I, I had hired Volkrieg for short-term contracts here and there. Uh, to be completely upfront, I am 100% surprised that Volkrieg sent you here. Uh, he must. Uh, we, we didn't end uh, his last job on the best of terms. It wasn't enough that I would send a contract out on him, but uh, yeah, he wasn't top of my list for people to hire next time. Uh, Volkrieg got a kind of a do-gooder edge to him uh, at the end of our, our last interaction, and that's just uh, that causes problems for people like me. So uh, yeah, I, like I said, when you all showed up and started spouting his name off. Uh, I figured I might as well hire you. You know, I, I wouldn't kind of drop you off into the sea. You seem like good workers, but uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know what he was doing. And honestly, good rins, I guess. I mean, do you know anyone that was close with him? I mean, it seems unlikely that the level of aggression that was targeted at him and by extension us, uh, was something that would be warranted by someone in his position? You know, what I could probably tell you is Wolf Creek took a job that uh, somebody didn't want him to take. And like I said, the, the way that he was growing morals, uh, it's not surprising. You know, you try to do good in this verse, and there's always going to be somebody to put a boot on your neck. And it sounds like Wolf Creek got the boot. I mean... What good did he try to do? I don't know. I just know... I, okay, so the last job I asked Bull Creek to do was uh, take out somebody who owed me a debt. Simple job. Bull Creek's a mercenary, bounty hunter, assassin, all that kind of stuff. Easy enough. Could have blown up the guy's house. Could have taken him out with uh, you know, glowing battle. Like, I don't care. You know, I don't tell people how to do their jobs. Just to do it. So Bull Creek comes back to me and he says, oh, this guy's in debt. He's trying to pay for his, you know, his wife's medical care, and oh, like, he's he's already taken out two mortgages on his spaceship, and oh, he's you know, a sob story, you know, and this isn't my Volkry, you know, I, I, I've seen this guy decimate entire villages, but there was just something about this, I don't know, something hit home, something changed, and he, he said, I can't do it, I won't do it, and I, yeah, I, I wouldn't hire him again after that. Hmm. So the guy wanted to do good in this verse, and like I said, that's, you know, like rolling a boulder uphill. He was out of character. Yeah. Out of character question, was the maw that the, the princess was captured at not the one that we were on when we were meeting Volkrieg? Was it a different maw? It was a different maw. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the maw that she was captured in was in the hegemony of men. Uh, you guys were all in neutral space. Hegemony of men. Why didn't I write that down? Um, because the tower is also in the hegemony of yeah. men. Yes. The hedge hodge homogeny. Hedge hodge homogeny. Mm -hmm. Would you all recognize that an elven princess, heir to the empire, being in you know, uh, an ally, but also a competitor in their, you know, spatial area. Not even at, at, in, like, high terror. You know, she was being a diplomat. That makes sense. But this was just kind of an out-of-the-way mob that just happened to be within their their boundaries. So you're kind of wondering what was going on there. I'm sure you realize that if Volkrieg was in trouble with someone and sent us here, then... That's because he either considers this place to be safe even from somebody powerful that could destroy an entire maw that might have been tailing him, or a place that was capable of defending itself if he left some sort of evidence behind. Well, I mean, he's, he's not wrong about one of those things, you know. 
uh, maybe both of those things. I don't know. All depends on uh, the value that you all hold versus the cost, I suppose. I suspect it was less about us and more about whatever he had that tied him to this place. Did he stay here often before the severing of your relationship? Every now and then. Yeah, Volkrieg would, would stay here if he was on a job, but he was never a long-term contract. And, uh, the guy liked to travel around and take any job he could find. He, he liked getting experience under his belt, and then, like I said, I guess he grew feelings. I don't know. It's not uncommon for somebody to grow a conscience after a time, or to change their sense of morality. Did he stay in the inn frequently, or would it have been elsewhere? Nah, he stayed on his stinky ship. Never uh, mind. The, the beds weren't big enough for him, he said. I don't know. Do, does that, uh, oh, what is it called? The shuttle that we land in? Is that still in Rocket's uh, garage? Uh, yeah, it would be. It would probably be, um, I believe it takes at least 24 hours to attach new stuff to. But we'll say that you, you have a list of the uh, new equipment that you got. So, so Rocket does have a uh, list. And you actually don't see Rocket in the bar right now, uh, which may mean that uh, you caught him right before he, he left work. Yeah, because, uh, well, I won't say this out loud, but uh, I think I will try to sneak out there to investigate that shuttle. Or the escape oh, the shuttle pod. that you all arrived in? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I thought you, uh, meant, you meant Under the, the assumption that there may have been information on there that we just didn't get we didn't like look and scour okay. it okay yeah um yeah the shuttle uh that shuttle would probably just be on the the landing platform i'm not sure he's uh necessarily had to do or wanted to do any work with that yet so yes the the peach cobbler one yes <laughs> is probably still on the, the platform okay uh quick question red uh because uh, it's just something that I've been thinking about listening to all that news. Uh, do you ever pay for freelance work? If there's, like, a big payout? Or a potentially big payout? I mean, those are my short-term contractors. Those are, yeah, normally if I need a, a one-and-done kind of job, that'll be a freelancer. Sure, what are you, what are you asking? Uh, I'm just thinking, well, how much would someone be willing to pay for ev for information on the princess? Jeez, I don't know. That's, oh, I mean, that's that's official business. You know, I, I tend to deal with the uh, the lower end of stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you had information on the princess, I would like, take that to the Elven Empire. I'm sure they'd pay a, a pretty penny for that. But uh, I I don't get involved with uh, official folks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you wouldn't get involved directly. Right. It's it's too much scrutiny. I uh, I mean. Do you, do you have evidence about the princess? I mean, we'd go 50-50 on it, you know? I'll look to Val. Like, I think it's Val's call, honestly. We have suspicions. Yeah? I believe she has contacted me in my sleep. Okay. I... Likely due to the nature of my people people got weird dreams um yes that is one of the sort of um outlying features not outlying underlining features um i'm a i am of the kalashtar people oh okay yeah i'm not i'm personally not very familiar but uh okay i so do not dream a... okay my family is tied to a a spirit in a sense who typically simply plays events that have happened in the past, memories in 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 a way, and um, as spirits can be, uh, are able to be contacted and can relay information. And on occasion, I receive dreams of things that have not yet happened. Um, usually, nothing of this import. A little surprised myself, honestly. Like, uh, and we suspect she's being held in the uh, the tower. The tower, the 
center of all control and power in the human hegemony, the tower? Uh, well, fellas, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, um, maybe uh, stop drinking coffee or chugging steak sauce before you go to bed, because weird dreams are, uh, are no excuse to go to the tower and think you, you're going to come out alive. Uh, I mean, that thing is just, it's, it's, it's like armies try to do that, you know, not, uh, not some, some half rent pirates. I imagine it would be more difficult for an army to approach unnoticed and to gain access than for a few people. I, I guess. I don't, I mean, I, I I'm out. <laughs> if you got information and you want to do something with it, great, but I'm, I'm not pissing off. Uh, the hegemony of men because uh, you, you think the, uh, the princess is in a tower. You know? How do you know I like to chug steak sauce before bed? It's not healthy. You should, it's too much sodium. You shouldn't do that. Gives you those weird thoughts that wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I've, anyway. heard, I've heard her do that. Yes, that's very accurate. It's, it's, it's almost like somebody's like trying really hard to play a trumpet but they've never played a trumpet before. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this shit out of character as a musician. That is a really particular noise, and I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you all have given me a good laugh. Go, go, go. Uh, yeah, go, go. Save the princess. Have fun. Have fun raiding the tower. No, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go now, if you all don't have anything else. Enjoy your drinks. Does uh, he seem scared? Uh, do an insight check. Byzantium, by the way. It's my favorite color. Oh, yeah, th thank you. <laughs> Insight's not my strong chorus today. <laughs> That's a four. He's, he's chuckling. He doesn't seem overly concerned, in a way. More just like, you can, can you believe these crazy guys? Uh, so yeah, you're not picking up really any fear or concern from him. Um, you... And yeah, he, he kind of scoots out, out of the booth, and um, the yeah the the hobgoblin uh, kind of hangs back just for a second. Goes, uh, hey, uh, <clears throat> whatever you do, just be safe. All right. Uh, Red doesn't give two shits about whether you come back or not. He just cares about whether. He get paid, so just take care of yourself first. You're gonna be the only one for good. All right. Word Sounds like morals are contagious. Yeah, well, you know, you, you keep my secret. I'll keep one of yours. You don't need to give me one now, but that's it. He goes walking off. I think the steak sauce farts is a good enough secret for you to keep. <laughs> <laughs> He just gives you a thumbs up from behind and he's walking away. Wait, what secret of his did we get? That he has, that he has feelings, yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> and well, yeah, I'm, you all are I'm gonna left. make it a point to not drink whatever drink was given to me. Okay. Uh I'm gonna well, I'm I'm gonna dip out. Uh y'all are welcome to come. I'm just I'm gonna check out the Peach Cobbler one. <sighs> I remember that ship. That was a good ship for us. I would like um, to talk more about colors. Everyone has such a specific favorite color, and mine's just green. We have I to mean, look at mine's some gray. Green. Yeah, but you should find I... a vibrant green then. Is Let's it look because you greens. like all greens? No, I I have to look at a bunch of greens and really narrow it down. Kelly green is a good choice. Kelly green is nice. That was my high school color. Well, if y'all are gonna be talking about colors, I'm I'll just go. I'll I'll meet back up with you on the ship. I would like to check out the peach cobbler as well. As long as we can talk about colors on the way, I'll go too. I mean, I've got maybe like five minutes of color talking. After that, I'm gonna get really bored. <laughs> There'll I... be no need for you to continue uh, involving in the conversation. If you're bored with it, you can start a different one if you would like. Well, I'm running on like an hour of sleep and like seven coffees and a frappuccino. Uh, that's going to crash real soon. <laughs> she did the sugar crash thing. Oh, she did do the sugar crash, but I'm tired. <laughs> 
If it wasn't our boss yelling at us to get out of the ship, I would not have gone out of the ship. Yeah. Well. Dessert time. I want to go see a guy about a body mod. Oh. Oh, glurp a derp. Glurp a derp, yeah. Yeah. Glurp a derp the amoeboid. All right. Uh, Well, let's deal with that first. So, uh, Zama, um, you you kind of you know go to Nelix and, and ask you know where's Lorpedorp's office, and uh, gives you some directions that kind of leads you know take a right to the left to see the office, and and absolutely you you do see like a doctor's office door with like a glass uh, pane behind it and it in amoeboid lettering which is nigh unintelligible sim I mean it, it almost looks like amoeboid just like globules. Of, of ink are splattered across this door. A very Rorschach looking. Uh, but uh, yeah, you would know that this is, it has to be, a uh, Glorpedorp's office. Uh, so you're, you're in front of the door now. What would you like to do? Um, yeah, Zama's going to be very not nervous at all, but um, unintelligible about this whole thing. But he's been considering it since Red talked it up earlier. And uh, I've got a question for you, meta question. Uh, how much did we get paid from that, in it, um, from Red for that last set of jobs? It did. Uh, we get paid. Like you, you didn't. It goes towards your. It goes towards your overall debt. Okay. So any coin you would have is coin that you would have uh, found uh, up to this point. So starting gold essentially, and that's it. And then what but we you found. You know that you can. Anything that you do while on the raft just gets added to your debt. It's it's very company store kind of thing. That that even what you you pay for is just added to your debt, so that you kind of get the idea. You're never really out of debt. Okay. All right. Um. Then I'll yeah. I guess I'll check it out then. Um. Okay. Then I, yeah. I'll, I'll go in and I'll just be kind of looking around and examining the whole atmosphere and. Unsure what to think, but he's pretty, uh, you know, pretty open to trying new things. That if it accelerates the process of him eventually being able to um, commune with commune with the sun. Yeah. Uh, so you walk in, and it looks a lot like like a doctor's office waiting room. Uh, there's a desk, and all along the wall uh, are chairs with like uh, small like end tables that have like kids magazines on them um and then the there's posters all along the wall like get your graph today and it's you know like a very simplified image of a humanoid with like a massive robot arm or like you know metal wings attached to them or laser eyes and it's like be the best you you can be um and after a a moment that like a a, an bell kind of alarm sounds when you walk through and automated like doo doo and uh, after a moment this wobbly figure um, emerges from a back room and it is a me boy which we I don't think have discovered or, uh, or seen just yet so a me boys are a race which is uh, unique to dark matter and uh, it's something I would be familiar with though right yeah, yeah, amoeboids are, are common enough that, that most of you would know what amoeboid is because amoeboids are native to the moss. To the moss. Uh, they technically, if the elves went in the first in space, uh, amoeboids were. And uh, they are these uh, entities which are made of. Uh, they're like cute. A, yeah, they're, they're, they're actually about pretty cute. Uh, so they're, they have like this fluid anatomy to them, is how it describes them. Uh, it's very jelly like, so there's kind of like a, a surface. And then they have uh, kind of like almost like a jellyfish. Like you can see the floating parts of their anatomy almost within them. And uh, yeah, this amoeboid kind of flubbers his way into the room and uh, says, Hello! What is your name? Hello. My name is Zama and I'm here. Hello, to Zama. S- to- Hi. You're here. Yes. Do you do things to the body that 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 help the body? Um, yes. Yes. 
I help things, uh, I help the body do wonderful, wonderful, amazing things permanently. Would I you want, like something done to you? I want to permanently be better, yes. Yes. Fantastic. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking of, um, uh, let's see, we could, we could plate your body in armor permanently. We could uh, attach a cannon to your arm permanently. Uh, we could embed a phaser into your face mm, permanently. <clears throat> we could give you heavy legs. It's better than it sounds. We could uh, uh, make your body covered in spikes. That's a good one. Uh, wings, also an option. Uh, lots of things we could do. What would you like? I, I don't... I'm not so much for the function of all that stuff. Um, do you have anything in there that lets you talk to the Sepulchre Star? I mean, you want, you want to talk to a giant ball of flaming gas? Exactly, yes. Where's that one? How much does that cost? You, you've you made me sad. Ah. Why? That's, that's not, I... I don't know. That weird little cloak is weird. Look, I make all these weird cloaks. I, I don't, I have, I don't, I don't have that. Oh, okay. Um, what do you have that's, that's close to that can get me like halfway can you get me halfway there um i can help you learn a wizard country i can help your body uh concentrate uh so that you when you get hit uh your brain is in arcane focus and you don't lose concentration of a spell i can embed a battle fist that i don't think it helps you talk to stars uh, I can give you a universal translator. Uh, I don't think that, that includes talking to stars, but it's closer. Okay. Uh, how much for the wings, in case I need to fly there? And how much for the translator? Uh, so the wings allow you uh, flight for a total of 10 minutes, and those are... 5,500 credits. Holy shit. All right. And the translator is five. It would be 6,000 credits together. Okay, so 500 and 5,500. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I, this bird ain't flying today, I guess, because that shit's... Nope, that's above my... Uh, <clears throat> you see he reaches under the desk and pulls out, like, a very nasty-looking buzzsaw. And he's like, get started. Get started today. Um, uh, do you need? You don't need to cut into. Okay, listen. I have an issue, and oh, fuck. I really don't want to waste one, but um, I'm going to use my wild shape to do the um, circle of. Oh gosh, what is it? Uh, circle of configuration. It starts my uh, how my tattoos start lighting up and my form start changing. Uh, just part. Can I do just part? For, for show, or do I have to go... We, we won't count this as a wild shape. So, yeah, you're, you're not doing this for, for combat or anything. Okay, so I'll just focus so that um, so that my only my arm begins to, to reconfigure into, like, a, a, a robotic arm. And um, I'll show them that. Now, when I change, will it... Will it will it change? Will it still work? Or will it uh, interfere? I suppose... If I make your arm into a cannon permanently, you can make your other arm into a cannon. Uh, I don't. I don't need to fight. I don't care about fighting, other than to protect people. I just care about getting closer. Uh, I mean, getting close to a star is is hard. It's very hot. And, uh, <laughs> I mean uh, I spiritually, don't... my friend. Do you do you have spirit? Do you have a spirit floating in there? Actually, I have. I could I could give you a thermal regulator, which would help you ex ex experience extremely hot or cold conditions that could put you out in space. So I uh, die just a few seconds but... slower. I, I'm okay in space. I'm just all right. All right, let me speed this up here. Okay. Uh. Do you have anything that'll let me cast spells while I'm doing this? And I'll just hold the hand up while I'm like this. Because it seem to, seems to kind of fluctuate and fizzle. 
I can still speak, but I can't quite get the spells out. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Once you are your mechanical self, okay. uh, that's an either or kind of thing. But I can't, if I put one of your things in with the language, I can talk. Can I talk when I'm like that in a different language or understand languages or yes. whatever, whatever the mechanical, basically uh, out of game, whatever the mechanical benefits are, do, do I still get that in the other form? So um, to, to kind of game speak this, mm -hmm. um, if you were to have an embedded translator, that would be embedded into your brain, essentially. Um, it, it's almost like adding a chip into your brain. And that would give you, in the same way that if you drew and shape into, if you wild shape into a wolf, you can still understand all the languages you can normally understand. Um, and since you, you're changing into what was essentially a, a robot, a transformer, I'm going to say you'd still be able to speak. You'd still be able to, to converse because you're still something that would be able to converse. It's not like you're turning into an owl or, or a bear or an, an owl bear. Um, yeah, you, you would still have the ability to speak if you're... Oh. If you're changing into something okay so so it's like comprehend languages not speak something 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 yeah i mean what it what it really is is it's giving you the magical item universal translator which is installed within your skull okay all right if you all right if it'll last i'll just um hail my friends and uh yeah yeah i'll get i'll get the the translator thing so that i can so I'm not missing information to to help me uh, commune. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, that will be a universal translator. We use 500. Uh, we will charge it to your account. And uh, if you would come into the back room with me, we will um, open your skull and insert it. Is it as invasive as that sounds? Even more. Yes. Okay. I trust you. A lot. Great. I don't <laughs> hear that often. Uh, and I'll just basically just hail, um, I'll hail uh, Val and let her know that uh, I'm going to go in for a casual operation uh, and I will meet up with them as soon as they're done at the Peach Cup. Or as soon as I'm done, or I'm dead. Casual operation sounds like an oxymoron. Yeah. Uh, so, Zamba, you are ushered into a back room, which is a strange mix of auto body shop and, like, surgical um, uh, theater. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're laid down on a table, and the last thing you see is, uh, before you are, are conked out, is the, the amoeboid standing over you, gloved up, going, it's gonna be great. You're gonna love this. And uh, then you go to sleep. And we're going to uh, jump back now to everybody else who's going to the Peach Cobbler. Uh, so yeah, you all uh, walk out onto the platform and see uh, the Peach Cobbler is lined up right where you left it. This uh, this very uh, pristine on the outside um, white shuttle um, that, that you all traveled to uh, the raft in the first place on. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm gonna go inside it. Okay. And um, if there's no guards or like. No, yeah, no guards. Um, it's it's not even locked. Uh, it's it's literally just how you left it. You still see the um, the blanket and pillow on the ground that indicated part of where Volkrieg slept. Um, and yeah, all the all the seats. It's just as you left it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look around on the interior. Okay. Uh, what, uh, make an investigation check and tell me kind of what you're looking for. Sure. Um, so I think that I will be looking at the like the internal panels under the seats. Uh, any place I could really think of that I would hide something, or if I was a mercenary where I'd want to put something that I think like idiots would find. Mm. Uh okay. Yeah, uh with a 19 you you kind of take a look um underneath the seats. Um you 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 kind of rifle through some of the drawers for the 
the cockpit panel is. Um, it's, it's as you're moving around, you accidentally kick the pillow that's on the floor, which has like this big sweat stain on it. Um, but as you do, your, your foot hits something hard inside. And uh, you, you go to pick it up and you, you realize that the, the pillow has actually been stitched uh, on the other side. I'm not going to make you make any rolls or anything, uh, but you are able to kind of undo the stitching. And you see that inside is, um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, I'll find it in a second, but it is essentially like um, a hollow, I think it's a hollow sphere is what it's called. And it's a communication device. It's a message device that produces a hologram very help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope kind of thing. Okay, and is it tied to another channel, so to say? Uh, like, This would be one that um, holds a message. It's not a communicator in the sense that it can okay. send messages. It's kind of like um, an It's like a letter. Oh, yeah. a letter. How nice. Uh, I'm going to just put that in my bag. I, I don't necessarily want to want anyone from Red's crew seeing us carry something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I'll keep looking around if there's anything more. I'll check the outside too. Uh, yeah, the outside has um, just a little bit of scoring just from being in space, but otherwise, it actually looks relatively clean. It was this, you know, this strange ship to be attached um, to Volkrieg's ship in the first place. It was very, you know, like I said, cobbled together, which. Each cover got its name. Um, yeah, the only other stuff that uh, Arza that you find is uh, some rations, which you you missed on the way in since you weren't even on the ship for that long. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, like a small kind of survival pantry uh, right by the bay door that has you know maybe like some sleep gear, some uh, some communicators, uh, stuff you kind of already have except for the uh, the space rations. Okay, yeah, I'll grab the rations because our fabricator broke. <laughs> it is in the process of being fixed. That's also on the <laughs> list that you gave to Rocket. <laughs> uh, so I'll munch on that because I don't want bird seed for dinner. Fair. <sighs> <sighs> so I didn't see anything that looked like uh, another compartment on the outside? Uh, no compartments on the outside. Okay. I'm just kind of along for the ride. Is there anything I can assist with? Maybe lift uh, me up so I can see up on top of it. You can show um, uh, Lockjaw some love. Okay, I'll Sit do there that. Sit play with your dog. Yeah, uh, yeah no, you guys kind of get the idea that you've probably checked over every area of this ship that there could be. All right. Uh, well, well, we might uh, might as well call it a night. Uh, I found something, and I'll say that really softly, and I'll look around conspiratorially. Mm -hmm. uh, to see if we're being watched. Uh, yeah, no, you're inside the ship. Door's closed. Nice. Uh, let's go back to the ship. Uh, I found something we can go give a listen to, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna start briskly walking with my little halfling legs back to the ship. Okay. Um, on your way to the Odyssey, uh, everyone who's outside, um, we'll say it, it took you an hour to kind of check over the, the rest of the ship, so we'll, we'll jump back to Zama real quick. Zama, you are, um, you're, you're pulled from your not-so-restful sleep, and your head is pounding. Um, even so, let me pull up the rules on the Universal Translator. Uh, Develop a it's Twitch. normally a handheld device. It translates any spoken language. Uh, but I'm also going to say that because it's embedded into your brain, you can also read any um, of the known languages. So I... anything that's cryptic or ancient language, stuff like that, isn't necessarily going to fly. But um, you, you will have an understanding of all the languages which are well accepted throughout the universe. And cool. um, as you, you're kind of blinking and your eyes are, are focusing, um, you can see Glorfdorf standing over you, and he goes, Well, that went surprisingly better than expected. So, good, good for you. Um, I am, we're going to do some tests real quick, and as you kind of, like, reach up to your head, you realize that there's, like, 
kind of some some light scarring. He, he used some futuristic medicines and all that, so it's not like you've got Frankenstein stitches all around. But there's like just a little bit of raised right around where he probably just buzzed your entire dome off and uh, and inserted something into your brain. And you've got a, a not so soft headache right now. Uh, nothing again, nothing that's causing damage. But um, he says we're, we're going to do some tests. So if you could look at the poster on the board, and um, you see that there is uh, a sentence in common. Uh, the was it, the quick fox jumps over the brown lazy dog, and you see that in common. You see it in Draconic. You see it in Elvish, in Gnomish, in Dwarvish. In uh, you see it even in like Vect binary. Um, you see it in Rothian. Uh, you see it in the Meboid, you see it in Nautiloid, uh, you see it in all of the known languages are just repeated over and over. And even though your brain recognizes that's Dwarven script, you're, it also goes, but I can read that. You, you can read the same sentence over and over and over. And um, is, this, is this all, are you, is, are you getting this? What, what does this sentence say? I don't understand I mean, why you wrote it so many times. A fox really isn't that a type of dog? It seems. Foxes are Gina, not dogs. Gina, they're Gina closer phobic. to cats. I think. Are they? Are I, they? I think they're extinct now. Oh. I think they're they're very nice, and but dogs are nice too. Yes. So the yeah the, the the fox jumped over the dog and the moon and stuff. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I see. Oh, lots of them. The same thing though. You really didn't mix it up a whole lot. None of imagination went into this process. And uh, you hear him say something in a me voice. He, he calls you an asshole. That's it's not very professional for a surgeon oh, to good. call it me an asshole. Super well, great. Okay, that's that's test number two. I think you're you're good to go. You understand everything. Oh, there, so, was, oh, there I, was a test. Have a good day. Come back soon. Okay. All right. Uh, call me if you. Uh, Come up with anything that lets me talk to the Sepulchre Star. Appreciate yeah, I'll that. Get, I'll get working on that. You you go talk to talk to stars. Oh, my head. You know, just kind of like cut my hand on my head. And as a uh, as a as a doctor myself, can I like tell if that's going to long term any long term scarring or damage there, or is it futuristic medicine? You you should be fine. Okay. Futuristic medicine for the win. Uh, Zama, where are you headed? Uh, back to the, to meet them back to the uh, at the ship. That's right. Okay. Uh, so Zama, you are coming out of kind of the the inner area of uh, the raft right now. Everyone else is traveling from the Peach Cobbler. Everybody, go ahead and make perception checks as you you head towards the opposite. Uh, do you want me to use the one that I accidentally rolled when I was in the Peach Cobbler? That's up to you. It's a 10. Go ahead and re-roll it. Okay. It is... Uh, so, Arza and Ruby, you two are kind of, like, walking side by side. Uh, you've got, like, Lockjaw there. Lockjaw is, like, almost chasing its tail for a second. It's very cute, and you both are more connected to Lockjaw than the others, so it's kind of distracting. But Zama, as you're walking out, you're kind of rubbing your temple. You've got a bit of a headache and bright light is kind of being an issue right now, so you notice that there's kind of a series of bright lights in the sky, Br brighter than any of the stars, brighter than the several moons. Um, and Val, you're, you're kind of looking up into the sky right now, and, and you see this as well. And what you see are four, um, four bright lights descending quickly towards the platform. See four lights. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, there are four lights. There are four lights. Oh, kind that's... of like looking up. Hmm. Uh, do they look like meteors? Uh, <laughs> so, Arza, you haven't noticed. Val, are you are you indicating to the others? I'm. I'm just gonna kind of like. Hmm. I don't remember there being stars there before. Yeah, they're getting bigger and bigger. Um, and Arza, you, you might have noticed Val's hmm 
So you look up now, and you see they're getting closer and closer. These are not meteors. They are ships of some kind. They are craft. They don't look like standard ships, though. Um, they almost look like giant people, maybe. Why? And as night is, is as the sun is kind of dipping down to your left as you're walking from the Peach Cobbler, so this would be in front of Zombie. Uh, you can see these things kind of silhouetted against the, the setting sun, and you see four separate, uh, what some of you may know are Lakshayan frames, which are mechs, Gundams, these, these giant robots which also act as ships. And uh, all four of them uh, with kind of these uh, these jets coming from their back and their feet and their hands uh, each set down kind of in succession on the, the surface of the raft and uh, each one of them does like the hero pose with like the, the one knee and the hand down and uh, you kind of actually even from where you are you can feel the reverberations as they each just clank 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 each of them is different, while at the same time maintaining a, a semblance of uniformity. They they all are different in the stylizations of them. So the first one that you see is what you would know to be more of a traditional um, black chain frame. It has uh, kind of like an oni mask on it, the, the, the like Japanese mm -hmm. samurai mask with the, the teeth, um, and it is carrying, uh, or it has on its back. Uh, the the mech does a large like laser sword in a sheet. Um, the next one that you see is slightly shorter and seems to have like a metal stylized beard on it, uh, with almost like a, a helmet um, formed into it. And it is carrying. Hold up here. Uh, this one is carrying a. Uh, Stylized battle axe, which you also, as you, you take a closer look, realize is also a uh, a gun that the, the the kind of pole arm of it ends in a, a, a hollow like cannon. Uh, the next one that you see is about the same size as the bearded one. It doesn't have a beard, uh, and this one is carrying a uh, like a mace. Uh, let's see. What all do we have here? There is. Okay, uh, the next one you see has a, a very Voltron-like uh, like cat's mouth kind of around the head, very like Herculean with the, the Nemean lion sort of thing, uh, and these like laser claws which extend from either hand. Uh, and then the last one you see oops, is, oh, which one do I want? So many good options. Uh, Yeah, okay. Uh, the last one you see, it looks very much like the, the first one. No Oni mask, just very kind of, again, like Power Rangers, Voltron face. Uh, maybe more like Transformers, like Optimus Prime. They wouldn't necessarily show them out. And that one uh, has a, a long like, pole arm uh, strapped to its back. So they all look like these, these giant warriors, but they are uh, fighter ship sized. Which, as a reminder, fighter ships are less than 100 feet. But still, that's like, you know, these are probably 50-foot robots, which have each touched down. I think and at I, first I'm not going to think anything of it and just kind of, like, start to walk, like, around to the ship, like, out of their way, just assuming that they're supposed to be here. Or surely, if these were people who weren't supposed to be here uh, and they arrived so armed, Red would have something to say about it, right? So I'm just, like, casually mm -hmm. walking, like, change path a little bit around to the side, still heading to the ship. Do I recognize these ships? Um, I'm gonna say no. Okay. But uh, I, I will. The, the final thing about them is each of them. The the uniformity about them is each of them has a large glowing X, uh, kind of carved across their chest that, that like light is emitting from these X's. Um, and all the X Men. Oh, um, they oh. yes yes these are X Force Power Rangers. Um, Val, to your point, these are technically no more armed than any other ship. Your ship is just as well armed as these. They're just a little more, 
like obvious about it because their weapons look like weapons, not you know blasters yeah. or wings or anything. I was thinking more like when we arrived unannounced, it was on a life raft. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so excellent I've never seen somebody arrive that didn't seem expected. Um, you know, I've never seen him. Like I would assume that if this is like a clandestine dealing sort of place, and ships normally armed ships would have to arrive properly right this is my assumption as somebody who has like worked on a moth so yeah sure. plus didn't red threaten to like shoot us down when we were yes, headed this way exactly <laughs> um but and we weren't armed so i'm like oh uh, i'm sure they're here for something interesting and just kind of like yeah that makes sense taking notice of it you know to I whatever end stopped and i'm looking back and forth between the gundams and and i'm like why should the, 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 she's just is it so ours it's as you're thinking like you know do I, do I recognize these no not really like we have some history with the black shane gundams but no that was a while ago it's it's fine um the the arm that kind of is extending down the, the fist arm with these superhero landings uh kind of like the forearm opens up and out from each of these steps one individual and I will go ahead and describe them in turn. The one from the Oni Mask one is a large half-orc woman with uh, a matching kind of Oni mask that very much looks uh, orcish in style. Like the where a lot of Oni masks are intended to be scary, this one is like intentionally supposed to be reminiscent of like orc tusks. Um, and uh, and she's dressed similarly to uh, her her frame. Uh, the one from the bearded one is a, uh, a dwarven man uh, who is, again, dressed in a helmet. Uh, his beard is, is normal. It's not made of metal. And he's also carrying a battle axe that is also a blaster. Um, the next one that has a lion head uh, outsteps a uh, tabaxi male uh, who has, um, uh, what did that one have? Uh, oh, the claws. And they have claw laser claws, which Ruby recognizes as being very similar. And uh, the last one is uh, a female elf uh, who who steps out from the the last um, frame. And each of them, very much like their mechs, are are dressed uniformly. They have these glowing X's across their chest. And ours, I'm not even going to make you roll. You recognize every single one of them. Arza, these are your exes. Uh, <laughs> are you dumb. Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> you caught and, me. Uh, <laughs> it, did, it took just right before you said it for me to be like, the exes. Because <laughs> it's amazing. Sorry, continue. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a five. Um, so thank you. Oh. So go ahead and take your bios. Uh, I love it. Awesome. Thanks, Graham, right. for giving me these knives. It's fabulous. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. The knives. X's. And the Ciao. X's. See you after the break. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll be back in five. Yep. We'll be back. back. We'll be back in a few minutes. Everybody's, we're going to take a bio break. Thank you for joining us, everyone. And yeah, Trauk, uh, welcome to the community. And I hope you have a great time with your Dark Matter game. We'll be back in a few. See you guys.
audio. Oh, I think it did. And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. Had a bio break. We're here. Derek, take it away at your leisure, sir. So, Arza, um, I, I did uh, just switch the genders on, on two of these, so I will switch those back. You would recognize uh, these four individuals from left to right as, once again, were X's. Uh, the half-orc you would recognize as Uru Bit, um, a female half-orc that you knew in the Lakshayan, um, I think I named that, the Lakshayan dynasty, Cruz doesn't have a name, um, that you actually built your, uh, your swarm pistol, your, your very valued, personal to you swarm pistol. You learned how to do that from her father, and that's important to Lakshayan Onis, which is what she is. She's a, she's a special forces officer for the Lakshayan Empire, for the dynasty, in their wars against the encroaching orcs and hobgoblins in, uh, in the orc dominion. And you besmirched her family's honor when you up and left with this weapon that belonged to her family, more or less. It's, it, was, it was yours. You know, that's what you told yourself. But the skill to make it the dwarf is uh, Fina, like I said, the female before. They still do have a beard. Uh, this is Mishka Iron Ring. Uh, she's a dwarf you met on one of the mining asteroids in your travels. And uh, Mishka was accepted you right off the bat. Uh, they had a hard exterior. She had a hard exterior, but she was willing to, to bring you, another dwarf, or so she thought, um, into her home. And, and teach you to make your way through the galaxy. Your, your entire technologist background comes from Mishka and, and her training. And then one day you up and left and took more than memories with you. The Tabaxi is Caliban Cloudseeker, a, uh, another adventurer in the verse um, that thought you were somebody that could be relied on, a fellow tabaxi, an individual that, with, with you know, no serious reputation, or like a friendly demeanor, and you wouldn't stab him in the back. And so you did. And then the elf, the one of the first individuals that you met, someone who might know uh, Arza's uh, rainbow-haired elf form better than most. Um, this, the elf is uh, a male, I said it a female before, they are a male, this is Sylvanth Calgaria. Sylvanth was the individual who taught you how to rift jump. Your entire ability to travel through the verse, the, the entirety of your being, I would think, is because of, of who you met and what you took from them. And, and Graham and I discussed this briefly. Graham, you are peach cobbled together from these individuals and and so so many others and they look upsettingly happy to see you this is a nightmare uh so they see me you see that uru has um a, a device that uh, as she's getting closer and closer, they're walking very lockstep in a single line towards you. She's looking at this device and then looking up, looking at this device and looking up, and you can hear it beeping as she's getting closer and closer. And you, you recognize it as a proximity detector, uh, very much like from Aliens, they had the proximity detectors to mm -hmm. the aliens. But this one looks like it's been modified because whereas as she gets closer, you, you would think that she would see four dots she sees three white dots and one red one. And she gets closer and closer. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, uh, do I still have the smoke bomb? You're in sure. trouble! Uh, yeah, do I still have the repaired smoke bomb? Yeah. Okay. Um, are her hands near any guns or just with the proximity detector? Uh, she has one hand on the proximity detector. The other one is kind of resting on the hilt of a blade at her hip. Okay. Well, and at least they, she doesn't have like a lasso or something. Uh, 
I will slide behind Val and tug on the back of her shirt. Maybe tug a little more frantically. Um, well, well, uh, I'm gonna uh, um, not talk to any of those four people. Uh, they don't like me very much. I'm sorry. I'll find you somewhere at, on the ship. I've gotta go. I'm gonna try and bolt. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the smoke bomb and bolt. Okay. Um, that's all roll for initiative. <laughs> what should I do? Am I am, should I set a round? Like, do I set some rounds out? What would you like me to do? You, you you saw all of this. You're within thirty feet of all this happening. Um, they're they're probably they're about ten feet from everybody. But Zama Zama, you're about thirty feet from it. So go okay. ahead and roll for initiative two, Zama, and uh, you'll be in this as well. Fourteen. So, um, Arza, I'm gonna guess that your dexterity is probably higher than Zama's. Yeah, it's a twenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the Oni will go, oh, and then it'll be uh, Arza and Zama. All right, uh, Arza, you are first. Um, did you want to throw your smoke bomb? Oh, man, uh, what do I know about smoke bomb? Like, how far does it reach or obscure? It would obscure fr from what you saw, um, the intent, <laughs> at least from the, <laughs> the very failed wizard, the party wizard. Uh, the intent was probably a five foot space. Oh, five foot space? Yes. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. That's a little smaller than I thought. Uh, I guess that would change my entire approach to this. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily know that. But That's true. So I will throw kind of it down, and I'm gonna bolt, and I'm using I'm gonna use cunning action as well to dash, and then I'll use my action to take cover behind somebody's ship that is not mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. You the the Odyssey is on the other end from where you run. You ran. So you're running yeah. away from the Odyssey at this point. Uh, as I'm running, I'm be like, uh, try not to kill them. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Yeah. Are you doing it in that voice? Uh, yeah, I think so. Actually, okay. I I think Arza would not be speaking in Razzle's voice at that moment. Panic. <laughs> Just gotcha. yeah. So throwing the smoke bomb was an accident action. Then use the uh, bonus action to dash. Yeah. Okay. So you have as a as a halfling, you have twenty five feet right now. Um, so that'd be fifty feet total. I could get. It would be. You know, it would be twenty five because it's only the bonus action for dash. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. The, the dash and then the actual movement together. Yeah. Would be fifty. Right, but he's he's not using his action for movement. He's using his action for the smoke bomb. Like, isn't movement just a regular? Yeah, you get movement. Okay, no, I get my yeah, base movement. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I was like, how did my brain just break and not and forget how to play? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, where did I go wrong? I know. I was like, flat this out is... lying right to your face. Um, <laughs> yeah, Roll so... inside on Derek. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I'll do is I'll I'll go the fifty feet, and okay. if there's any thing to go around, I'll just try and hide so they don't have vision on me. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I will say that you're not directly hiding because they literally have something that shows where you are. Yeah. Um. But we can say that you have three quarters cover. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see. Um, it is Zama, your turn. Okay. Uh, so I'm 30 feet away from this encounter, and I'm walking up, seeing the situation, seeing the mechs, seeing the Oni uh, come down, and the chicks roll out of it, all Charlie's Angel style. Um, and I see them walking towards Arza, and Arza's freaking out. Arza throws a smoke bomb and then runs towards me, or it's like running past me, I guess. 
Ours is he's... running away from you. Okay, because they're dashing. Closer to the Odyssey where everybody, than everybody else is. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to put a, um, a. Uh, let me let me see here. I'm gonna try to uh, try to uh, to figure out the situation because it looks as though Arza is running away from these mixed people, um, of. But they don't look aggressive. All right, can I do an insight on myself? Is that a thing? Can, you did um, also say out loud, try not to hurt them, which I think 30 feet away you would have heard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would have yelled that. Which means he doesn't hate them. Which means, oh, man. All right. But he does look, uh, th what way, actually, you're still in Razzle form, right? Yeah, I'm still in Razzle form. I think the expression Razzle would have is just absolute terror. Okay. That helps. <laughs> like, okay. This is someone that is willing to run to the edge of the galaxy to avoid dealing with anything. Okay. So as Razzle, Arza, uh, is running past Zama and Zama is walking, I'm going to continue walking towards the other crew members, but I'd like to cast Pass Without a Trace on Arza as they are, um, as they are, you know, as they're going by. Okay. Because it looks as though if they look terrified, then, you know, I, I, I'm all for helping them. I just don't understand the scope of the situation. So it would be like help them and then go catch up with, um, with Val and Ruby and figure out what's going on. Okay. So Zama might not know this, but Arza is being tracked by magical means. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll try, you know. Yeah. No. You you know what, Arza? You're worth the spell slot to me really oh, thanks you know now i just need to make one sh lucky shot to shoot that device that's right uh zama anything else for your turn uh i will walk as so that will be my action and i will yeah i'm not going to do anything aggressive because that i heard i heard what they said and i see the smoke screen and i um just gonna walk towards val and ruby and 30 feet so i'm going to assume like i just just get there and then, uh, uh, hi everyone, how's it going? Okay, so Zama, you walk up, it is the Oni's turn. Uh, Zama, the elf turns to you and kind of puts a hand out, uh, and, and draws their, their katana, which is kind of, uh, emanating with this crackling black, uh, energy from it. Um, it's, it's physical, it's not like, you know, a light sword like, uh, Val has. Uh, but it seems to be emitting an energy in a way that the light sword does. Um, and uh, he puts a hand out and says, uh, Stand back. Don't don't get involved, Avial Ra. We don't need any extra help around here. This is, this is our business. And um, he does that to you. The uh, dwarf um, moves up to Ruby. The tabaxi moves up to Val, and they they both say, "You need to stand down. You, just let us let us get to uh, our, our little friend over there, and and just don't even get involved." And uh, they have both uh, they're all going to ready actions depending on what you do, and then um, Uru Uruba is going to uh, continue walking past Val in a very calm manner uru is going to just um move 30 feet towards arza and uh, she's going to kind of shout sweetheart why are you running you know we're going to find you wherever you go just make this easier on everyone and uh she has drawn her uh, swarm pistol in addition to continuing to hold the uh motion tracker uh so uh it is, they have all readied actions for attacks, depending on what you do. They are not being actively, um, they're, they're being aggressive, but not dangerously so up to this point. But they have brandished weapons at all of you. Uh, Val, it is your turn. Um, is the tabaxi, like, facing off with me, like, five feet in front of me kind of thing? Five feet, yep. How far away is the, um, orc woman? Half orc? Uh, she would be... 30 feet from you, then. 
Uh, I'm just going to put my hand on, like, the hilt of my laser sword. Um, and one out towards the um, tabaxi as well. Okay. And say, stop moving and state your business. And if the orc, half-orc woman doesn't stop moving or, and or, hmm, if she doesn't stop moving and no one tells me what's going on in a way that makes me feel like I will allow her to continue moving, I'm going to cast Hold Person on her. Oh, okay. shit. Uh, yeah, the, the tabaxi has given you an order, you have given an order back, and the, the half-orc is not stopping. They don't seem particularly intimidated by you. Uh, so yes, if you would like to cast Hold Person. Sure would. Wow, I'm an idiot. Uh, um, so she needs to make a wisdom saving throw. She is held. Okay. Uh, so when you do that, uh, the dwarf and the elf uh, both kind of see... Uh, so you, you held the tabaxi. So the, the dwarf and the elf both No, I held the, the orc. The half orc. Oh, you held the half orc. Okay. She's only thirty feet away from me. Gotcha. You're right. So when they see uh, Uru get held, um, all of the three that are facing you um, take their attacks. So they are going to take uh, katana attacks at, at me. Each, at at each one of you, because there's there's one for each. <gasps> one. Okay. Um, so this uh, will go in initiative order, really. So this will be uh, Zama, then Val, then Ruby. Um, they get two attacks with their katanas. What in the fuck is going on? So, does a 12 or 16 hit Val? Or, sorry, does a 12 or 16 hit Zama? A 16 might stand by. No, my armor class is now 17 with unarmored okay. defense. Uh, so, uh, they go to... Uh, I think. This was the, the elf kind of takes a couple of slashes at you, and uh, you, you deflect them uh, pretty deftly. Actually, you, you were kind of ready for things to get heated. So you, you swipe out of the way of one, and then um, you kind of like press against the blade. You don't actually get damaged by that. You press against the flat of the blade, and you're able to move it out of the way. Uh, the next two are coming at Val, and I guess neither of those hit. The, the only one wearing armor. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> and the last two towards Ruby. Uh, I guess the 25 will probably hit Ruby. Okay. <laughs> Look at the eyes. <gasps> Uh, Ruby, you will take 11 slashing damage. So, uh, Ruby, you watch as Zama is able to move out of the way, and then you, you basically just see Val stand her ground as this katana bashes against her shield and her armor, and you're like, wow, that's really impressive. And then you feel the katana just kind of, like, slide into your side a little bit. You, you're able to move out of the way of the, the other strike. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it, it stings it up just a bit. Cool, 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 great, cool, awesome. <laughs> I, cool. I know, I know, you're welcome. Uh, okay, and it is now Val, it is your turn. Or no, um, yeah. Like I just had my turn and you made did. them all I... mad. <laughs> yeah, no, Ruby, um, I think. Ruby, it is your turn, I'm sorry. I was thinking the Oni, but they had ready to action, so they're both free. Yeah. So Ruby, it is your turn. I mean, I guess I'm gonna unsheath my laser claws and take a swipe, like. Do it. Uh, yeah, you, you take these laser claws, although these, these individuals are wearing, uh, like, tactical armor, and, uh, the, the laser claws kind of swipe against the armor, they, they leave some indents, but, uh, you can tell that it, it didn't do any damage. I'm gonna shout, why are you hurting me? What's going on? Uh, and it is back to, uh, top of the order with, uh, Arza. Arza, you've seen that Val has held Uru. Awesome. Uh, how? And so she's like what, twenty feet away from me? Uh, she would be because she went thirty yes, feet towards she me. Went I ran 30, 50. So, yeah, twenty to fifty. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna peek around my cover and I'm gonna try and take a shot at the device in her hands. Okay, that's gonna be uh, a cold shot, so it is going to be pretty difficult. Yep. But she also uh, is not moving. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, I would have given you disadvantage, I'll, I'll, we'll just make it a straight roll. Okay. Uh, I guess I should probably specify if I'm using the antimatter. Or not the antimatter, the uh, swarm pistol or the repeater, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Oh man, uh, I'll use the swarm pistol. Why not? Well, it's a twelve. <laughs> yeah, um, you're a little shaken seeing these these ghosts from the past, really, and uh, your, your shot goes just a little wide. And when Uru sees this weapon, she can't move, but you can see like her eyes narrow and like the, the teeth are trying really hard to grind. Awesome. Uh, man, I will draw the repeater with my other hand. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can make a second attack, right? I don't think I can. I don't think with a ranged weapon you can. No. Uh, not without the feet. So, I will draw that, and then I will just run away <laughs> further okay. down. Okay. Uh, so you dashing again? Uh, yeah, I think... Putting as much distance between me and the scary orc, or the scary half orc, is probably the best bet. Okay, uh, another 50 feet. Then you are now 100 feet away from the rest of the party. Um, okay, it but is, I'm 70 uh, feet from her. Uh, it is Zava's turn. Interesting. All right. So none of us have actually been. Oh wait, no, 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 Ru no. Because no, they just hit Ruby. Ruby's they did hit Ruby, yeah. They yeah. tried to okay. hit all of you. Ruby's taking damage. Uh, yeah, they weren't pulling their punches. We just managed not to get hit. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going Can, If I reposition myself to put a cube in front of me, like for a Thunder Wave 15-foot cube, can I hit multiple of these people accosting Val, Ruby, and I? At least two of them. Yes. Yes. You're, you, you are standing perpendicular um, to the rest of the party, so if... if how big is the cube for Thunder Wave? I think it's 15 foot cube, if I remember correctly. Okay. Y you could probably angle it yes. in a way yep. that uh, it, it wouldn't get Ruby and Val. Okay. And get how many of them? You, you would get three. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I want. Seeing one hit Ruby. Uh, yeah. V uh, Zama's got to tweak a little bit on that one. Not very happy. Normally tries to avoid the violence, but that's just too far already. Um, so I'm going to cast. Uh, I'm going to pivot to the side so that I definitely do not hurt my allies, and cast um, Thunder Wave at third level, and try to push them away from, um, away from Ruby and Val, the the three that are, are right there, and that is a shitty, shitty, shitty roll. Um, so a yeah con save for them ah fuckers um so only uh one of them fails yeah. uh so only one of them takes the three damage or they all take the three well, well it's 14 damage um one of them takes or two of them takes seven damage and don't move and one of them takes 14 and does get pushed away okay uh so the one that gets pushed away then um in order from you to the furthest one would be the tabaxi in front of val um so, so Val, you are perfect. Ten... <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, yes, this is a, a jellical cat. Um, <laughs> so, so you pushed one away, and then you said the others take seven, but the one that gets pushed takes fourteen, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to, at, right after I cast a spell, um, start turning myself, um, start going into construct form, and change as the spell's ending. And, um, as we, uh, yeah. Yeah, as I change, I'm actually not going to say anything just yet. I'm just going to uh, keep quiet and observe what's going on. All I know is they hurt Ruby, and that's not cool. Though we don't know what they're after ours are about, and if that's the only thing they're after. So, sure. okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll cast that just to try to get them away, and then see what happens afterwards. Oh. Uh, it is now the Oni's turn. Um, Val is, whole person is, is, remind me, is that something, is that a check every turn? She can make it at the end of her turn. Gotcha. Okay. So even if she succeeds, she loses her turn. Okay. And it's wisdom? It is a wisdom save. So, uh, yeah, she can't really do much else, so she will do a wisdom save. Not gonna get it. Um, okay. The, uh, you all see, in, actually, including, um, including Uru, you, you see 
all of them kind of, well, actually not include the Rue because she can't activate it, but all of them reach towards their belts and kind of press on like the, the center of their buckle. And all of them except for uh, Uru and actually, the, no, ex all of them except for Uru um, do this. And you see all of their images kind of shimmer for a second. And they're all a lot harder to see. And they have all activated uh, cloaks, um, very much like the, uh, the Dark Elf individual that you met in last session. So it's it's very Predator. You can still, like if you're really looking, you can see, uh, but you'll have disadvantage in all uh, attacks on them while they are cloaked, which is uh, not even an action for you. It's just something that, that kind of happens. And uh, they are all going to take uh, katana attacks again. And because it's a natural thing, I'm not going to give them advantage on their attacks for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll go with, once again, in order of initiative. So two going towards Zama. Okay. Uh, two going towards Val. The 19 hit Val? Uh, the 19 will hit, yes. Okay. Did you want to use your shield charge? Not yet. Cool. Uh, so Val will take eight slashing. And then uh, two more towards Ruby. Is it 15 hit Ruby? Yeah, both of them hit. Okay. Uh, okay, so the 17 points of slashing damage. Uh, and that is the end of their turn. It is now going to be um, Val's turn. I'm going to... Um... I'm going to go yank the thing out of the half worked hand. Um, she's held by me. I know she that is. there is somebody within five feet of me. Mm -hmm. So as I step away, now I'm going to activate, if they attack me, my um, my shield. Okay. Just in case they're going to have some way to try to like prevent me from moving. Gotcha. Uh, they are going to take a reaction attack. So okay. Do, uh, so shield. Uh, okay. So they, they go to, to Slash thinking they have an opening as you turn your back, and just as you do, uh, your shield kind of emanates this extra energy force uh, and pushes them back, uh, knocking their katana kind of back over their shoulder. And uh, yeah, they do not get the reaction attack, and you are able to uh, go over to Uru. Um, go ahead and make a strength check, or you can do sleight of hand depending on your flavor. I'm definitely going to go sleight of hand. Since she's held and literally can't do anything, could I have maybe advantage on the roll? Um, what you're trying to do is is break her grip on it, and because she's held and she has good grip on it, um, I mean, you can see it, you can get to it, it's just trying to wrestle it from her grip. So, it, it probably doesn't matter. She, she does not apparently have that good of a grip on it, so... 18. <laughs> Uh, you get the, uh, the motion tracker from her. Okay. Um, and since she can't do anything, how far away was she from me? She was 30 feet? She was. Okay. So I don't move away from her, okay. but the light sword comes out and like, as if like you were threatening like a person, like, you know, how you like, you hold the knife to the person and you're like, don't do it or they get it. I'm basically doing that to the tracker. And I'm like, state your business. And like okay. threatening to like basically i'm going to slice it right off um like right in half if any of them move without telling me what's going on okay uh yeah the uh the tabaxi that you had been fighting with before says uh we're just here for arza arza owes us all quite a lot and ours is worth quite a lot and actually you know what we weren't going to do this before. We were just here for Arza, but you all have been a massive pain in the ass, and every single one of you has a bounty on your head with some rather nasty people. And uh, you know what? If you're going to be like this, we that's fine. And uh, you see the Tabaxi has like a, a gauntlet on its arm, and it uh, reaches down and uh, pushes a button. You see a very beacon like this red light starts emanating. And they go, that's fine. <laughs> we got friends on the way. And, uh, Do I have a way of like contacting Red? Is there like a hailing thing? Do we have like Star Trek communicators? Yeah, we had the comms, right? He's in your five. Oh, yeah. He's in your five. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Red intruders. They are uh, calling reinforcements against your station. Uh, you hear Red go. Ah, fuck! I was, I was a, I was in bed. I, fine, great. And uh, he's like, Cappy, uh, great. And you can kind of hear him. Like he, he leaves it on. He's like, I gotta put on pants now. We don't even like pants. It's dirty. Ah, shit! I forgot to turn this off. And you hear it click. Anything else for your turn? No, I'm like, I think that's basically all I could do. Okay. I do have the sword out. <laughs> and until the end of my next turn, or until the start of my next turn, I do have a 23 AC. Just as a point of note, because I'm sure they're all very angry at me at this juncture. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Ruby, it is your turn. Every time I go to hold the space bar to temporarily unmute myself, I just put spaces in the chat like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm super duper <laughs> I'm I'm super duper down on hit points right now, so I'm just gonna try and back off with my hands up. Uh do you want to disengage and use your movement? Or take the dodge action. Yeah. Okay. If I disengage, they get a they get an attack, right? No, if you disengage, they don't get the reaction. You can disengage oh. and then use your action and use your movement. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Yeah, Back disengage up. is an action that specifically prevents opportunity attacks. Right. And uh, while I'm backing off with my hands up, I'm gonna say, Arza, you son of a monkey's uncle! I'm a hundred feet away. I don't hear that. <laughs> Uh, That's fine. I'm just yelling it for my own point. But you, we didn't roll initiative for good old Lockjaw, who's with us. Oh, we didn't. That's right. Uh, Lockjaw just kind of like backs up. And actually, you know what? Let's give let's give Lockjaw a couple of turns. Um, that's my bad. I meant to include Lockjaw, and it just slipped my mind. Uh, so where is Lockjaw? I just assumed that Lockjaw went bounding off after Arza because that's who he's currently like imprinted <laughs> upon. But, uh, that's true. But Ruby has the leash that Lockjaw's on. Yeah. Uh, we will yeah, give Lockjaw just... two bite attacks uh, towards the individual that was fighting against Ruby. Uh, so uh, neither one of those hit, unfortunately. Uh, so Lockjaw does take a couple of snaps, but as Ruby's kind of like holding the leash. It's it's like you know, just almost. It's like and Ruby's like, ah, dang it, and just almost. No, didn't quite get it. Um, okay, yeah, Arza, your turn. Man, so I'm 100 feet away. I have a max distance on my repeater of 180 feet, I believe. From the repeater. I believe that's right. Yeah. Uh, I am going to maybe do the bravest thing that I have done this campaign and not run away and I will walk 20 feet towards them uh, out of all the X's who did I end the worst on not and I don't mean like ended like I mean which one did I treat the closest to being kind with the breakup I was saying the tabaxi probably uh, the tabaxi definitely they, they all have kind of different levels so so Uru I absolutely just, deserve that. It's a sense of honor sort of thing. Um, Mishka, she welcomed you into her home. She gave you a place to stay on an otherwise uninhabitable planet. She, she taught you a lot. I mean, the, the elf, uh, Sylvia, taught you to, to rift jump. I mean, they, they gave you the ability to make money in the verse. Uh, yeah, the, the tabaxi, I mean, they gave you the ability to fly in the first place you you would have never you know learned rift jumping if it hadn't been the tabaxi basically being the parent you never had taking you you know flying in space they, they trusted you with their ship and you ended up flying off in it <laughs> oh yeah that's that's fair dude. uh i'm gonna fire a shot at oh man i really don't want to hurt any of these people i still love them i just don't want to hurt them anymore uh, 
I really, oh man, okay. And he, he's still wailing on Ruby, right? Uh, Ruby's moved away at this point. Oh, okay. And that was the, the dwarf. Mishka was fighting against Ruby, height to height. Uh, the okay. Baxi was fighting with Val. The elf is fighting with Zop. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna fire a shot at Sylvan. Okay. And because Zama's within five feet, I do have sneak attack. You do, but you moved... So I moved 20 feet closer, so I'm within the 80 range now, which is... Uh, it's, uh, the repeater Or is it 60, 60 range? range. Yes. Oh, heck. Alright, so it would just be a flat roll then, right? Yes. Okay, so I will just make that flat roll. Unless you hide. And miss. <laughs> yeah, you, you do go a little wide, um, but Zama... You oh, can in retrospect, kinda... I should have used my bonus action to teleport the additional 10 feet, and that would have gotten me within the 60-foot range, right? You can. Yeah. You want to do that? Go ahead. So I'll do the 25 movement, then 10. That puts me at 35. Okay. And then I'll take the shot. Okay. For... So that'll be 20, then. Okay. So that, that does hit. Uh, nine points of damage as uh, Zami, you see like a blast kind of come over from, from your shoulder and Fox Sylvan like right in the in the shoulder and you, you see him actually take a, a decent amount of damage 18 points of damage uh, towards Sylvan um, no, whoops, uh. and uh, anything else for your turn If y'all are busy dicking around with my friends, how about you come for the person you're here for? I'll flip. Oh, wait, I'm carrying two guns. I can't. <laughs> you can totally, like, just let go of the grips with the one finger. Nah, the adrenaline and coffee is all that's keeping me going. I gotta hold tight. Fair, fair, fair. Dilf goes, oh, honey, don't worry. We'll get to you very soon. We're going to take your friends, too, by the way. Thanks for shooting me in the back. I'll shoot you again. I'll shoot you again. Will be the first time. Like this? <laughs> oh, okay. uh, it is uh, Zama, your turn. So Sylvanth has just uh, taken a decent amount of damage after the Thunder Wave and the, the blast to the back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Zama will see Arza shoot them and then they react like that and um um say how to I did not harm any of you and you attacked me you hurt my friends without provocation you did not explain yourself I must hit you in the face yes and then I will uh Use my bonus action to uh, change my construct form into the, what's it called? The Juggernaut configuration. Mm -hmm. Basically just giving me, um, taking away like the blaster arm and giving me um, more armor plating. So I just kind of puff up um, and get uh, and get bigger. But at the same time, I lose the, the blaster. So now I have to make melee attacks. Um, I uh, will. I can't make the bonus action attack because I used that already. So just one attack, and how do I do that? Stand by. There we go. Okay, good. I, I thought I programmed it in. Oh, yeah. Go fuck Sylvanth up. Uh, punch this. Uh, punch this dude in the head, and for fifteen points of force damage. Okay. And um. And as I uh, I'll, I'll kind of like puff it up a bit, uh, adding all these like configuring all these these armor plating around myself, and um, trying to look more menacing. Uh, punch Sylvanth in the head and say. You should leave now. This is a bad place for you and your friends. And then yeah, just. You so Sylvan has just been punched or uh, shot in the back, and then you basically get a mechanized gorilla fist and just break break his nose. 
and he, he looks like dazed. There's blood coming from both nostrils. Yeah, good good hit. And, I, and that's it. Yep, bonus action and action. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it is their turn. Um, let's see. The... Order. So Sylvanth is going to uh, draw something from the belt. And um, he's going to say, Listen, big fella, you want to act like a beast, I'll treat you like a beast. And uh, he pulls out what kind of looks like a grenade, but as he kind of just throws it at you, it starts to expand. And uh, what he has done is uh, use a taser net. So we're going to see if this thing uh, hits or not. Is it a ranged attack roll that he that uh, they have to make? Improvised attack roll. It, they are within five feet. It doesn't say whether it's ranged or not. It's just a plus one bonus to attack rolls. Um, if it acts like a net, nets I think are technically um, ranged are attacks. Right. Yes. I can look it up um, if you like. It doesn't say, but we'll we'll assume that's probably what it is. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll give him disadvantage even though eleven. Or even a twelve probably doesn't hit. Uh, no, no, nope, not anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't um, hit. But we'll, we'll go ahead and roll just to see if there is a, uh, a net one, just to see if they net themselves. No, okay. Uh, so he tries to throw the net, uh, but he kind of just like lobs it a little bit, and it smacks against your metal exterior and then falls to the ground and then opens up. And he goes, shit. And uh, he'll take one more uh, katana attack with the uh, multi attack then. Uh, so he's gonna hit. Man, Sylvan sucks. Okay, I'll just kind of, uh, yeah, Z uh, Zama will reach out and, like, grab the wrist on the downswing, and, um, I guess just for flavor, and then just fling it away, and, um, yeah, just kind of sh shake the, shake his head. Not cool. Not cool, man. Not cool. So, Arza, how close are you to everybody right now? Should be sixty feet. Okay. Um, the Mishka, the dwarf that was engaged with Ruby, since Ruby has moved away with Lockjaw, uh, Mishka is going to uh, draw her swarm pistol and move uh, thirty feet closer, and uh, she's going to take a sw three swarm pistol attacks with disadvantage um, on each of them because that is extending the range to its near max. Is that on? Uh, that's on Arza, not me, right? That is on Arza. Uh, so a twenty-two, a nine, and a seventeen. This is the dwarf that's doing that, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so the seventeen and the twenty-two will hit me. The okay. nine won't. Yes. And I will use uh, not counting uncanny dodge. Okay. Uh, on whichever one of them is going to deal more, which is probably. It'd be the six. Okay. So that would be 11 and a half, so I take six damage from that. Okay. All right. And um, uh, they are still. Actually, you know what, Kyle? I should have given you a uh, disadvantage on your melee attacks because they were cloaked and I forgot about that. But you know what? I forgot, so I'm not going to penalize you. Uh, also, uh, wait, wait. It didn't calculate. Oh, it's a one plus four. That's four. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so. Um, Sylvanth had their turn. Uh, Uru needs to make another wisdom saving throw. Come on, Uru. What the hell? They have a plus two. I don't know how I've rolled a below ten on every one of them. Um, okay, and then... I'm sure that at this juncture I can just, like, feel the rage, like, emanating back through the, like, magical tether, and I'm just like... like heat waves this, coming is, this is not going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Mishka's had the turn. Uh, this is Caliban's turn. Caliban is... Uh, gonna take three more slashes at that, or two more slashes. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Val, no Val. Actually, you went over to to Uru and, and took the thing out of their hand. So, yeah, the the the, the Tabaxi went and, and attacked you. But we'll say that's fine. Um, so, what's your AC with your? It's twenty three, unfortunately. Okay. So, so the one will hit. Them. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so that is... Uh, Woof! Woof! 24. Uh, right? 21? Plus, plus, no, it's a 21. Oh, 21, 21. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have four hit points. <laughs> oh! How are you so low? Girl, me do, too. Do we uh, still have those nanobots? <laughs> I have 33 hit points. That's it. That's all good. Oh, wow. We have the same amount of HP. I do too. Do we all have 33 oh hit points? Gosh. No, I only have 28. Oh. And, uh, you, you hear Mishka kind of yell out, All of you need to stand down immediately. You're all under arrest. You, we're taking each and every one of you in, and we can do it with you conscious or unconscious. That's Those are the options. I can't go back to prison! <laughs> Can you take us in while you're unconscious? I'm just going to like focus down on. Oops. I'm gonna focus down on. Yeah. And Sylvanth, who's absolute shit. I hate Sylvanth now. Goes no you. Awkward. Oh, Sylvanth. Awkward I creature. That one the most. <laughs> yes. Tam Sylvanth. Uh, all right. Uh, that is the end of their turn. Val, it is your turn. Um, I am going to, with my action, lay on hands and regret giving five points to Arza earlier and just do 15 nice little points um, of healing. Um, so I just have, like, the laser sword in, in my one hand, um, mm -hmm. so with the hand with the, like, buckler defense-y thing, um, that one's going to be the one that there's, like, the bright light, like, encased and, like, wreathed in the darkness um, that she lays on herself and heals. So I just bump that up to 19, so I'm not dying. Um, and then with my bonus action, because that's not a spell, um, with my bonus action, I'm going to do... Oh, wait, that's concentration. No, I'm not going to do that. Which one of these isn't concentration? <laughs> None of them. Oh, I <sighs> took the wrong one. That's what it was. I meant to take the um, the plus two. Oh, no, that is a concentration. Shield of Faith. Yeah, yeah. I thought one of those or Sanctuary wasn't concentration. Just mm -hmm. kidding. Um, I don't think I have a bonus action thing to do then. Uh, I'm just going to um, pull... No, I'm not. I'm just going to stand there with my, with my little 19 hit points. Kind of face off. Okay. <laughs> With the guy. Cool. Uh, Ruby, your turn. So Ruby, you're not in melee range with anybody. You've kind of uh, you took your disengage and your. Does, does Ruby have 25 feet of movement? Yeah. You took your 25 feet of movement. You're kind of standing away from everybody right, everybody right now, trying to kind of catch your breath. Um, what would you like to do? I'd. <laughs> okay. Do you want to run towards like the the inner? area of the raft, or did you want to hide behind a ship? Whatever's closer. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can say that the closest would probably be just, just hiding underneath the ship, if small enough to do so. Uh, you can roll a stealth check. Would love to shart. Shart. I would love to shart. <laughs> <laughs> bonus a, bonus shart. action shart for the win. <laughs> That's, yep. Oh, I never I'm... see it coming. Oh. <laughs> Smell the defeat. Just trying to play a trumpet. <laughs> yes, yeah. I hate you. <laughs> full circle. First, full circle. It's all that steak I, sauce. I meant I would love to. <laughs> all that steak sauce. <laughs> I would love to shout, Arza. I'm not ready to die today, but I am. Okay. Sorry, I clicked out of the. I really don't want to give it up. Okay. Um. I clicked it twice. Ruby, you, you have taken the stealth action. Um, anything else for your turn? Um, Any bonus action here? Nope. Try okay. not to die. Uh, try not to drop lockjaw. unconscious. Are you holding on to Lockjaw? Yeah. Okay. Lockjaw will make a uh, stealth as well. Which well, she actually has a plus six to stealth. Ooh. Oh, damn. Lockjaw is incredibly well hidden. <laughs> you actually... Um, Behind you, know you. We'll say this. You watch as Lockjaw even kind of has like a natural cloaking camouflage that kind of like ripples through its feather or its uh, furry scales, and you're just kind of like holding like, uh, like a ghost dog on a leash, really. 
Just uh, wait. A side note. I know we're in the middle of battle, but does anyone remember when, like, they ha you could get at the fair, like, it looked like a leash, but it was like a really solid leash so that the collar floated and it looked like you had a ghost dog? That's exactly. what I imagine this to be like. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of, yes. Same. Same. <laughs> yep. Arza, it is your turn. Is uh, Zama still near Sylvanth within five feet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would have disadvantage on the attack because they are stealth? Yes, that's, yes. Wait, they, Zobanth all... is still stealth? They, stealth. They, none of them have moves, so they still kind of have a cloak on them. I kind of forgot that. So, um, me that's too. on me. But yes, uh, so if if any of you are attacking them and have advantage, it would be a straight roll. So, for, for Arza, it would be a straight roll. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to stay where I am. I know I just got shot twice. Uh, so I'm gonna take a shot at Sylvanth, who I regret deeply. And <laughs> as I'm taking this shot, I'm going to turn to look at both uh, Mishka and Uru and just say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, that's not one. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot both of them with one bullet. <laughs> oh, no! Did you... Um, you shoot the crowd. Oh. <laughs> you really were sorry. I could have had you shoot Zama, but I'm not going to. I, I'm, I'm not uh, a fan of, of penalizing that uh, but You should at least give me the chance to get hit. You know, at least the, make me make <laughs> whatever... Yeah, make me make a save or something. I don't sure, mind. You're gonna make, make a dexterity. You're not save gonna hurt my feelings. I make my players pay for nat one, so you're not gonna hurt my feelings. No, honestly, I feel like a nat one is is punishment enough. You know what you did. You yeah, know what I'm you did. I'm not gonna do that. Um, <laughs> fair, fair. No, we're good. Uh, okay. Uh, or is there anything else for your turn? Oh man, I still have a bonus action. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh goodness. Is it a free action to sheath a weapon? <laughs> Uh, I'll sheath the swarm pistol. Uh, I still have the concussion grenade. Mm -hmm. Not that it really helps. But, yep. Yeah, uh, bonus action dash, and I'll start running towards their ships. Okay. Um, it is going to kind of put you in the, the melee area of everything right now. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to skirt around, like, the diagonal, so they would have to pull away from Ruby or Zama or Val to come after me. Gotcha. This is what I'm trying to do is... Okay. Um, yeah, we, we can call you probably 15 feet from the, the melee proper. Um, so you, you kind of run past, um, you run past Uru, who is, you can tell, like, she's vibrating with how hard she wants to, like, just reach out and grab, you run right by her. Oh, yeah. Um, you... I'll blow a kiss as I do it. <laughs> Great. Uh, on the other side is Val and Caliban. So you, you skirt past them without any reaction issues uh, or opportunity attack issues, and then you continue on past to where you're pretty much lined up. You're you're still about 15 feet away, um, but you'd be 15 feet away from Mishka and an additional probably 20 feet away from Sylvan, 25 from Zom. Yep. Um and speaking of Zama, it is your turn. Okay. Um, Zama's going to watch Arza kind of run by. And, um, hmm. Let's definitely change things a little bit. Oh, by the way, question. Is is Ruby within 30 feet of me? Ruby moved. Um, probably not, because Ruby has now tried to hide herself and has probably moved 50 feet from the combat. Ah, damn. Okay, I was going to say, because I, I forgot, I still have, accidentally have Pass Without Trace, still up and running, and if she was within 30 feet, then she would have had advantage on that stealth check. Um, just checking. Okay. Uh, so, to see uh, ours are running by, and Zama's um, gonna, going to, like, look down, and, and almost like the ape, the, ape the, the robotic ape form, and look down at Sylvanth, and... I'm sorry, I'm going to have to knock you unconscious. 
I will not kill you or your friends, but you are a problem. And then, um, and then make, uh, uh, first attack towards Azel Sylvanth mm -hmm. with my repulsor gauntlet. Double hit. Uh, seven force damage. Okay. And, um, yeah, so I s smash down with the first fist. Take a, take a glance. How Sylvanth looking as a... Uh, significantly rougher than when they first arrived. Okay, I will attack with the second repulsor okay, so. gauntlet, and for another five uh, force damage. So I'm just gonna <laughs> kind of like ape, uh, <laughs> ape smash, um, Sylvanth, and then stand there. I am willing to, as long as I have this form up anyway. I'm I'm willing to tank whatever. So if I'm drawing attention, that's fine, as well. Um, but I don't want to, yeah, I'm going to, one by one, I'm going to knock these people out and then allow us to walk away. So, start with Sylvanth. And, yeah, smack Sylvanth a couple times, and that is it. That's, that's all I'm doing. Uh, Sylvanth is bruised, bloody, still standing. Um, s somehow, on a scale of 1 to 58, Sylvanth is about a 6. Um, crossed out. Okay, uh, it is the, the Oni's turn. Sylvanth is going to... Uh, with their their last effort, take uh, three katana or sorry, two katana attacks at Zama. Wow, you suck, Sylvanth. Really, <laughs> Sylvanth finally got a good roll. Uh, so that is uh, twenty one points of damage. Um, Uru is going to make her wisdom saving throw. Ten. G good job, Uru. She's not gonna make it though. E <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, and then uh, Arza, you're going to see Mishka reach for something familiar, and Mishka is going to reach for her taser now. So she's going to make a oh no, um, attack this one. It says 13. Nope, 13 okay. won't hit me. Uh, so it's kind of as you're running, she launches the taser net at you, and it just kind of like hits the ground, rolls past, and then expands out. Uh, she is still going to take uh, one swarm pistol attack at you. That's fine. So nothing for that. Um, and then uh, Calipan is going to take uh, two katana attacks at Val, who he has clearly and rightfully identified as the threat. Why is he creepy twice now? <laughs> He's not okay with this. So right. much vengeance. So the... I think we've agreed that Calabanth is, is the scariest of all of them. Uh, so that is 13 points. Okay, I'm still, still alright. Still okay. Still doing alright. And uh, with that, if Val, it's your turn. <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, cast Cure Wounds on myself. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to like keep alive at this juncture. Mm -hmm. Um oh. It didn't give me the option to well that's weird. No ability was found. Well, that's not true. Hold on, let me try this again. Lies. Oh lies. There we go. Oh nice, 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 nice. I did cast it at second level, so that is sixteen. Climbing, climbing back up there. Uh, so that puts me in 22 now. Um, so it's kind of like a similar sort of like appearance way the energy um, sort of happens, but I don't have to actually like do anything physical um, for that to happen uh, as opposed to the other one. Uh, and I'm still just kind of like staring down the tabaxi with a, um, what was it that I said before? like state your business like oh yeah this doesn't seem an honorable action and i would question your intentions that's all i say because i don't know any of the context behind any of this sure the, yeah uh caliban looks at you and goes listen if you knew what Oz had done you you'd be on our side too why did you choose to attack instead of just explain yourself 
Why did you reach for a weapon when we asked you to stay out of our way? I didn't harm any of you. I have yet to hit any of you in a harmful way. I have simply restrained someone. I reached for a weapon to disable your device. Nullifying one of our team is an act of aggression. And anyway, why aren't you dead yet? And, uh, <laughs> anything else for your turn, Val? <laughs> okay. Uh, Ruby, you are attempting to hide. Uh, would you like to do anything else for your turn? Can I try and hide better? <laughs> you you can. You can d dip more into the shadows if you'd like. Okay. Oh, shit. Epic. That's worse. I think that's <laughs> worse. Hiding worse. It's the, exactly the same. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you like scooch a little bit to your left. You're like, this is good. This is, good. Um, <laughs> this is so much better. You do. Um, Lockjaw. Yeah, Lockjaw's still just like invisible the only identifier of lockjaw even being there is the leash and the panting uh okay arza your turn am i within 25 feet of one of their vehicles you're probably within or 35 feet. 35 feet sure okay uh i want to go 25 feet and mm -hmm. is calibanth the closest one to me uh no caliban would be back where uru was so the closest one to you is probably Sylvan. Okay. Uh, how they're pretty high, right? Or like, not high. They're like spaceship size. They're um fifty. I think we established fifty foot robots. Okay. Uh, is the cockpit still open? Uh, no. They they kind of exited from like the gauntlet area, and and those all closed afterwards. Oh, okay. Darn. I was gonna try and teleport in and drop a grenade. <laughs> 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 that was that was my bluff. Uh okay. Uh that changes everything. I'm going to take another shot at Cal not Calbanth at uh Sylvanth. Okay. Uh I think that's Hey, 26 for 15 damage plus sneak attack. Uh sneak are attack. you taking uh Sylvanth out in a lethal way? Absolutely not. I I think Arza has very few uh, moral quandaries, but I think I would be shooting merely to, like, incapacitate rather than to kill. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so you would know that the armor they're wearing, the Slakshay and Oni armor, it does absorb a lot of damage. It's very, like, Kevlar-like and that you can still feel, which is how they're taking damage in the first place, but it's not lethal. So, so you aim for the armor, and Sylvanth is looking so rough that uh, yeah, you you kind of blast Sylvanth. They take one in the in the chest, and uh, Arza Arzama, you see uh, Sylvanth just kind of crumple to the floor, and they are they are conked out. Anything else for your turn? Yeah, uh, free action. I'm going to grab the concussion grenade, mm -hmm. and I'm going to call out Caliban. If you if you don't surrender, I am going to throw this charge right on your ship and blow it up so you can't leave. Caliban just kind of turns around and, and goes, You already took one ship. What's another one? That's fair. Uh, okay, anything else for your turn? Yeah, I might as well use the cunning action. I'm going to try and hide. Okay. Uh, where are you trying to hide next to, I guess, the ships. Like ships that are close by? Yeah, because they don't have a means to necessarily track me with the device out of their hands. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, stealth check. Wow. You know, the amount of nat ones I've rolled today, that's four. You are emotionally compromised. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, Arza, you're not thinking correctly, and you're not really, like, familiar with your form, so you get to the point where it's like, you can't see them, so they can't see you, but, like, your legs are sticking out. And... Um, okay, uh, Zama, it is your turn. The uh, the enemy in front of you has been incapacitated. Mm. Uh, what would you like to do? Can I visibly see that he is unconscious rather than dead? Uh, you could make a medicine check if you'd like. Sure. Because this is a, a bloodied individual who you, I mean, gorilla beat to the ground. Um, 
Yeah, with check like yeah, you you can tell they they didn't take the full damage. You can you can see that they're still breathing. Okay. Um. Yeah. Just kind of shuffle it with my foot. Still breathing. Look up. Um. Uh, do any of them look to like they're approaching Ruby? No, I, the Ruby is just kind of. I know she's the over there trying to hide. I can see her plain as day. I don't know what she's doing over yeah, there. I don't see perception. Can see Ruby. Yeah, I don't see the dog, but uh, boy, is Ruby just really not doing a good job at hiding. Uh, and kind of waves. <laughs> I don't. Um, what is Mishka doing right now? I see the, uh, the dialogue with 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 Caliban, but what is Mishka doing? Uh, the last thing Mishka did was try to throw a taser net at uh, Arza and then shot at Arza. Okay. Uh, so no one is within melee range of Mishka. Um, she's about ten feet from you, and uh, she's got her her focus on Arza. No, and Caliban is also has. Um, Caliban his... is over by Uru and has engaged with Val. Okay. And they are about uh, what would that be? Uh, forty feet from you. That yeah, that's okay. So that's priority. All right, a uh, forty. Oh man. All right. How about? So Mishka is ten feet. Mm -hmm. Can I move the fifteen feet to get on the other side of Mishra Mishka, and start heading? towards Caliban, but since I can't reach Caliban in this form with 40 feet, I'll take the 15 feet to get on the other side of Mishka, attack Mishka, and then I'll head over to Caliban the next turn. Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll take uh, kind of trance 15 feet on my knuckles and go over and also make a similar statement to Mishka. Um, I'm sorry. I have to knock you unconscious. I will not kill you. Your friend is still alive. He must leave us alone. Thank you for your patience. And then on, bird brain. I will. I'm a gorilla, motherfucker. Um, I'm going to uh, double double punch. Um, action bonus action punch, Mishka. I'm going to assume that they've got a. I'm going to assume the second one misses, but the first uh, Actually, they both miss. Um, oh. When you go to strike at Mishka, um, you see that she raises her gauntlet and a very similar energy field to what you've seen Val has uh, kind of emits from it. And uh, she uses her parry reaction and kind of knocks your gorilla fist uh, away. Um, yeah, nice try. Try it again. Okay, I will. And just stare blankly down. And then she looks at you and she goes, Fine, well, it's my turn then. And she'll take uh, two katana attacks at you. Damn, a JRPGs. So does the 16 hit? No. Okay. 24, I'm guessing, does. She will do uh, eight does. slashing damage towards you. Uh, let's go ahead and get, hopefully... Uru can get out of this. No! What the lily hell? Oh my god. <laughs> Katie, I never, I never thought whole person would be the bane of my oh, existence. Right. Yes. Um, okay. And then um, Caliban will uh, take his slashes towards you, because Caliban is connected, but maybe if he takes Val out, uh, whole person will go away. Ooh, you know what? Well, I guess make your attacks, and then... Concentration. Jeez! Oh. Yeah, I have... Completely forgotten to make any concentration checks. Okay, throughout I was all of it was this. concentration or not. I, I, it is I absolutely it concentration. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, it's it's fine. It's made for some interesting roles on my part. Um, so that is. Uh, well, it doesn't matter because I'm unconscious anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Val has been knocked unconscious as uh, Caliban takes these slashes. As Val has tried so with so much effort. To maintain her, her health points with magical healing after magical healing, uh, Caliban finally just gets enough uh, oomph behind it, and uh, value falls to the ground, and we will um, do some death saves on the next turn, and uh, Uru then has already had her roll, so she doesn't get any turn for this, uh, but Uru just kind of, like, you see just the, the tenseness of her muscles just kind of relax, just like, oh, Caliban? If you hadn't, I would have. Okay. 
And uh, that'll be the end of their turn, uh, since uh, Sylvanth is down. And oh, that was so close to a natural 20 on my mm -hmm. death save. God, uh, that would have just been the best thing to wake back up and be like, whole person. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been great. Okay, yeah, Val, that is uh, one success for you. Uh, Ruby, it is your turn. I'm still gonna hide. I'm okay. gonna try hide better. T two points better. <laughs> Get getting there. Ruby's like just a little bit more into the shadows. Just a little bit more. <laughs> Sliding in. But then you kind of go like, guys, I'm hidden. And it's just... Um, okay. Yeah, well, Lockjaw has nearly left the ethereal or left the material plane at this point so i'm not i'm not gonna make lockjaw make any more uh rules uh arza it is your turn so you have just seen val go down oh, um no. you've just seen uru uh regain the ability to move and uh caliban and uru are both kind of turning their attention towards you while mishka i should mention has also engaged with um Zama. how far away are they like 30 feet yes yeah, that would Zama and Mishka are thirty feet. Um, the others would be sixty feet. Okay. I oh man. I'll hop on the comms and try and signal Homer. Oh, uh, okay. To start the ship and to swing by and try and see if he can pick us up. Okay. Um, or, or I might just say, Homer, uh, Homer, um, there are four Lakshayan mechs that are currently parked. I need you to blow them up, or at least intimidate someone that we will blow them up. Can do. And, uh, yes, you, you see the, uh, engines start up on, um, on the Odyssey, which is the, the action for the ship. Uh, so it'll be the, the next round. We'll, we'll consider that as part of your turn, since you're the one that is essentially controlling it. Yeah, uh, and I will. So that would be my action, right? We count that as an action. No, that was a free action oh, to okay. tell Homer to do something. We'll kind of just tack okay. in the same way I'm tacking Lockjaw's turn onto Ruby. I'll tack Homer's action onto yours. Okay. Uh, I will shoot Caliban because you know what, Val is a valid and valuable member of my team. But valid, that's a twelve. Valued Val. <laughs> All right. Um, twelve. Uh, that does not hit. So um, you, you, you fire wild once again, and uh, Caliban just kind of like, starts to snarl in a very uh, wild cat sort of way. I flip him off, I run behind his ship, and I'm going to use my cunning action to try and hide better. You just hear uh, Caliban go, yeah, real cute. It hasn't worked for me so far. <laughs> for, yeah, a 15, though. Okay. All right, um, Zama, it is your turn. Shit. Okay. Um, so things are looking pretty grim. Fuck. Okay. So ours is trying to do things from the outside of combat. Ruby is trying to hide from the outside of combat. And Val is down in combat. Mm -hmm. My tanking ability is pretty much gone. All right, um, uh, I'm going to uh, look at uh, look look down at uh, Mishka and give a like gorilla faced uh, blink um, blink to Mishka and uh, say toodles and what's wrong with your face? I hear people wink like this. Um, and I'm going to uh, change my my form, reconfigure it down to uh, like the shape of a cat-like figure, like a cheetah almost. And I'm going to try to like leap and bound and start running away from Mishka, Mish, Mishka, and towards Val. And okay. uh, um, so she'll get an opportunity attack. Right? Yes, with disadvantage, because mobile or mobility form, whatever the form I just changed into. Okay. Um, so let me see here. Hold on. Let me double check. Make sure that I'm right. Uh, yeah. Mobile configuration. Forty. So it's forty. Nine either way. Okay. Forty feet of movement and then disadvantage. Yes. Okay. And um, 
I'm going to uh, uh, jump jump away and run over to, um, to to Val. I'm going to assume since I moved 15, 15, 15 feet to get over here, you said it was 40 feet, right? Before. So I have a that's 25 feet to get over to Val? Um, that... Yes. Okay. I'm going to... Yeah, I definitely haven't moved. It's fine. <laughs> end this... I'm going to end this wild shape. Wait, I gotta... Do you have to do anything to end a wild shape? It's been so long. I don't know I if it's... it's an action to end your wild Is shape. Is it? Fuck. Oh, so. Really? Damn. Alright. I don't think... I think it's a, it's either a bonus action or a free action. Yeah, I don't think it's an action, but it might be a bonus action. If it is, then that kind of screws. And piece. you've already used your bonus action, yeah. So yeah. it'll it'll depend on whether it's a free action or not, basically. All right, so druid and wild shape, giggity giggity. Uh, you can revert to your normal form earlier as a bonus action. Damn it! All right, so I'm going to just uh, in like panther form, just kind of. Get down around Val. So somebody just struck them down. I guess that is Caliban. <laughs> um, I might as well take a swipe at uh, at Caliban. Okay. I, uh... Avenge me! No, wait. No, 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 no. Okay, I will shoot at them on the way. I forgot mobility form. I get my pul repulsor back. Okay. Because I only have that. I only. I'm, I'm only restricted to melee while I'm in the juggernaut form. So yeah. As so, I'll be like. Turret on his back. It's, yeah, yeah, it'd be like, um, fuck, what was that? Beast Wars kind of shit, little Transformers. Um, like Zoids, if anybody knows Zoids. Yeah. Oh, God. That's just so sad. <laughs> and oh, the, uh, good old Toonami. Yeah. And the uh, a little turd on my back will kind of pivot, and as I'm running towards uh, towards Val, take a shot at, um, at Caliban. And, um, you know what? I'll still, I'll still do the same song and dance. I'm not trying to kill you. Just save my friend. Not trying to kill you. Flee in terror. Leave us alone. Yeah, that's very general. I uh, will try to make the repulsor attack as soon as I can get out of my spell list. Uh, there we go. Photon cannon. Yay! Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, 15 points of radiant damage as the cannon on my back pew pew uh, takes a shot at Caliban. Not to be confused uh, with Taliban. Caliban even tries to do their energy parry, and uh, the turret blasts through that. It kind of shatters his, his energy and just kind of dissipates. And yeah, you blast Caliban pretty far in. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else for your turn? Uh, just just get over to, to, to Val and then stand be, between Val and and Cal Caliban's the only one in melee, right? Where is. Ur oh, no, Ur no, 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 no. <laughs> It's Where's Caliban it? and Uru bit. Yes, okay. Uru and Caliban are on either side of Val right now. So to okay, get so just... in melee range, you would get an opportunity attack from one of them. Oh wait, they have Sentinel. Well, you're moving into their space on your turn. Yeah, but you only get attacked if you're moving out. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm still learning stuff. That's it's a, okay. It, it's yeah, yeah but, but there is a feat that allows you to yeah. get Sentinel attacks. lets you hit them whenever they enter. Yeah. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they do not have that, so no, they will not get an opportunity attack. Okay, so yeah, I would just move like right over top of Val and. Oh wait, that's a dog. Uh, yes, sorry. Cats so I'm growl. Not... My so... cat growls when she hears noise outside. She's like, Burr. it's so funny. <laughs> okay, we'll do a growl, hiss, maybe a. I don't know. I'm uh, Zama's a little confused about the the animal species and what's allowed and not. So yes, we'll go with that. Okay. Uh, it is the Oni's turn. Um, so so you have uh, moved up next to Val. You actually watch as um, Caliban reaches down towards Val. He actually reaches towards his, his belt once again and uh, pulls out something like what you've seen your, your healing sprays look like. And he kind of puts a hand up. He goes, listen, Val, it's fine. We're not trying to kill you either. And uh, he's going to use his action to uh, spray a stabilizing spray on Val. So Val, you do not have to worry about death saves anymore, but you are still maintaining a level of unconsciousness. It's essentially he's cast false light. Um, and uh, then he will use, we'll kind of combine this into an action since I consider healing potions to be a bonus action. 
um, he uh, handcuffs Val as well, and that would be his action. Uh, Uru then uh, is uh, going to throw her taser net um, at uh, at Zama, since Zama is an East Boy. Uh, it's so we'll try this. One, w five, will five, I five. know, or would I know, if that spray? Would I recognize that for what it is? Um, Zama is the is the ship's medic. You had a pretty decent medicine roll before. Yeah, you would recognize it's not harmful. At least you would know that. Um, and like I said, it looked at least like a health potion. Okay. Um, so you, you would recognize it as, as being something that is probably beneficial. Just want to make sure they weren't va vaping on. Just want to make sure they're not blowing vape on on Val. That's really rude. You get it, yeah, you vape. Some sit yeah. On, on Val's vape. <laughs> okay. And uh, is that the net roll? That was, and that ain't gonna be good enough. Yeah. So um, let's kind of dive over to the side. And, sure. Uh, so then she is going to take a uh, sworn pistol shot at you. Uh, still, I'm still good. Seven. My AC, my AC is 17 now. Is Thanks. that the one that's in melee with him though? Uh, Uru would be on the other side of Mayla. So she would yeah. technically have disadvantage oh. on it. So it, it, she has a 15 foot uh, range for the um, for a swarm pistol. Because they're supposed to be close range sort of things. For um, some reason in my mind, he was standing like over me, like sharing the space, because you can do that with an ally. So that's why I assumed that. Never mind. Yeah, but I you technically I was can't. imagining it was um, kind of like a three point uh, that uh, you have Val in the center. Caliban here, Uru, and then on the other side of Val from Uru, it was uh, Zama. That's that's how I was imagining it, but uh, we're not doing battle maps, so I, yeah. either one is valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah techni technically, you can share a space with an ally, but you can't end your turn in that space. Um, so yeah, but am I an ally when I'm unconscious? I'm really more of like an object at that point. I look, oh, I'm, I'm kidding, whoa. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's he's gonna curl up next to you. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of mourning here going on. Um, you could be an object at that point, but uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so the um, yeah, sixteen does not hit. Okay. Uh, the Mishka is going to take her three uh, swarm pistol shots towards um, Arza. Does she know where I am? Uh, her passive perception <laughs> is decent enough that she would be able to see. Oh no! <laughs> uh, I, I will because you are attempting to hide behind the ship. I will give you uh, half cover, so okay. she'll have disadvantage on. Uh, so what is that? That's uh, 19, 16, 11. Uh, 19 and the 16 will hit. Okay. Eight points of radiant damage as she is able to kind of blast. And she's hitting the ship as well when she's doing this. Um, but yeah, she, she does clock you a couple of times okay. with these so spray blasts. I will uncanny dodge half of that. I think I can do that okay. once per turn, right? Or is that once per rest? H half of one of those. It's just my reaction. Nice. Okay, yeah. Or something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then it's for the Onis. Um, Val, you've been stabilized. Not much else you can do, I'm sorry. Um, Ruby, your turn. You've seen Val go down. Um, you've seen Zama run over. You've seen Arza get hit. Uh, you have seen the Odyssey uh, begin to take flight. How far away is the nearest enemy? From you, you used twice your move, so you are 50 feet, 60 feet probably from, um, from Mishka. Can I move 25 feet closer and throw a dagger? Yeah. Help! <laughs> what do I roll for that? I didn't set up my uh, weapon. Uh, just roll a uh, roll a d20. Then just okay. uh, on the left side that has the full yeah. dice yeah. image. You can just roll a d20 and then just admit it. Your bonus would be for it. So what's your dexterity bonus? Three. Okay. And then let's see. Are you proficiency is three as well? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, so twenty total. Twenty, yeah, you hit. It's ranged attack. You don't get to uh, parry with it. 
I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Now D4. what? Yeah, Roll a D4. Four plus <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, so four points of damage towards Mishka, uh, who is looking actually pretty okay. Uh, Mishka hasn't taken... Mishka just took that Thunder Wave damage, and uh, otherwise she's going to be fine. Didn't I just blast... Oh, no, that, wait. Which one did I just blast? You blasted blast Caliban. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. The one who had, like, four natural 20s in a row. That's yeah, yeah. The, um, that's the <laughs> it's one because I'm taking all of their nat 1s. Yes, yes, I see. I, we are the uh, the foils here. Uh, the opposite. The yin and the yang. I take all the natural 20s, and you take all of the ones. All right. Um, do you have anything else for your turn? No? Okay. Uh, then it is back to top of the order with Arza. So Arza, um, you can also and give a command Homer. to Homer on this turn. And then also Okay, uh, so we'll do Homer's first, if okay. that's possible. So Homer has um, taken to the skies and is kind of uh, swept uh, around a little bit and is kind of up to your... Well, if you're facing everybody, it would be up towards your right. Okay. Uh, and is he charging the guns? Uh, he is charging the gun. The gun. Uh, because you also pulled Homer... Out, you pulled the Odyssey out from the mechanical bay where it was being worked on. So it was right in the middle of. I, I kind of imagine Rocket just. He's on the ship. <laughs> um, he was working on the out exterior of the ship. Uh, luckily, was not hanging on as it just flew away. So uh, there are some pieces missing uh, from the Odyssey right now. Uh, the light cannon has not been attached, so there is. There's one gun attached to the Odyssey. Okay. Uh, I will call out. Walk away, and we won't blast your ships. You you don't get any response for that. Okay, then I'm gonna shoot Caliban. <laughs> You're gonna shoot Caliban with your gun? It, with yeah, with my gun. Oh yeah, that's good specification. Uh, yeah, I'm I didn't know if Cal you were having the Odyssey blast the oh entire. Oh my gosh, that would <laughs> just kill everyone. Uh, thanks no. for joining us, everybody. Graham decided to murder everyone, mm -hmm. so. Uh... We won't be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's. I don't think I have an advantage, even if I have an ally within five feet. Correct. Correct, and she is still cloaked. As well, far as I have goes. Zama. Uh, Zama is over by Calvin. Mishka's oh. by herself. Well, so I shot actually at Caliban. Caliban's, Caliban. but not Caliban's not five feet from me. I made sure oh. I didn't because I needed I needed to be in range. Well, I That's, mean, I guess yeah. I. If she moved no, towards me, diagonal. or he yeah, moved, and he knew where I was, right? Like I was not okay. stealth. Right. Um, guy, so yeah. it's it'll be a, a straight roll. Right? Yeah. So He's, twelve. Yeah, that won't do it. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna move away from their ships. So if we have to blast these ships, I'm not gonna go and die. Okay. Um. You use your movement. I'll you get. Um... Ugh, can I toss the swarm pistol at? Guru. <laughs> Uh, like yeah. halfway between the two of us, like a country west, like da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. yeah. I just don't know a lot of you know um, old west stand or uh, stare downs that end with somebody throwing their gun in the middle. Well, I have two guns, and this is the one in the holster. <laughs> okay, um, I would give that probably a fifteen foot range. Okay, if that's you're fair. Really hefting it, maybe thirty. No, feet. no, fifteen feet is fine. Okay. So go ahead and make... Uh, are you trying to hit anything? No, no, I'm just tossing it uh, so that either she has to come to me from where okay. she is and I'm calling her out. Like, this is between her and I right now. Okay. With my 18 HP. Yeah, and uh, she looks call at you out. and she goes, you, you, really wanna, you really wanna do this? Fine. I'm coming, Fine. sweetheart. And can I give a look to Zama? And then a look to does does Val still have the canisters of the androids or does Zama have those? I have I have one. Do I have one? Zama has those. Oh, both. Yeah. You have I both. think you took both because yeah. I have them. Um, on my belt is one of those uh, gravity grenade things, but I don't have any of the thingies, yeah. the nanites. Yeah, because you have the the potentially healing nanite and the damaging nanite. We don't know which one is which. Yep. Yeah, I tried to identify him last time, but I couldn't figure it out. 
But yeah, that's all I've got for my turn. Okay. All right. Uh, Zaman, it's your turn. Fuck. Uh, Val has been stabilized. You're technically within melee of Caliban. Um, just outside of melee from Uru. Oh, all right. Um, well, Caliban actually brought Val off the brink of death, so this just kind of complicates things. Um, to be fair, I wasn't necessarily on the brink of death. He just kept me from having to make death saves. I could have woken back up for all we know. True. You heard none mechanically, of that. but <laughs> yeah, it, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> mechanically, but uh, by the looks of all intents and purposes, you look like you're going to die. And um, analysis dictates that we're not going to win this shit. Um, so if I pick Val up, I'll be moving at half speed, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Fuckity fuck. Uh, where is our ship right now? As I scan the hovering above us, right? Is it right, ab right above us? Yeah. It is hovering above where Arza used to be. Ours has kind of moved away. So, uh, from where you are, the ship is sixty feet as a crow flies. Oh, fuck that crow. All right. And um then about 150 feet in the air. Okay. Um I think the only thing to do is try to get Val out of this before they kill her or before her, they take her away or something. Uh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to waste a lot of good shit and um reach down and and take a mouthful of, of Val's armor. And uh, start to drag her away like a like a, a mother cat to to the to, with a kitten, and uh, take the opportunity attacks if they come. Um, with disadvantage because mobile or my mobile configuration. Fuck. All right, never mind. Um. All right, so the first attack. Come, who's the, who's the attack come by? Is it Uru? Tell me it's Uru. That mother. Tell me it's Uru. Uru's not within melee. Uru would only get, I guess, oh. an opportunity attack on. So Caliban uh, gets her up just to beat me down. How does that? How does that? Oh man. Caliban's gonna take you. He's away. a dick. This, I'm, this cat ain't gonna give up. I feel less and less bad for these people every turn. <laughs> well, I was like totally cool. Oh, they stabilized her. They can't be that bad. I'll just kind of leave with my friend, and then I get smacked in the face, and I switch back to, um, switch back to. Birdman form, because that was the rest of my uh, rest of my hit points plus, and hmm. So I still have my shit now. All right, all right. Let's play. All right. Now I can cast spells. Dirty mother. Okay. Um. <sighs> Shit, you're just stabilized. You're not even healed. Uh, this is great. I like this. Um, tough decisions. All right, I will. Since I've already been attacked by the person in my melee range, they've used a reaction. Mm -hmm. I will cure wounds. Um. At what level? It really doesn't matter. I'm not going to pump a bunch of levels into this because you're going to die anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put six points of, he of cure wounds into Val. And as I see her eyes flutter and I'm starting to pull her away, I have to <laughs> let go. And it's like, I'm sorry I tried. Uh, my head hurts so bad between it being cut open. And we'll talk about it later. Um, we need to go. And I will... So that's my action. No, I'm I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. That was supposed to be healing word, not not cure wounds. Actually, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Um, I'm gonna use that. That'll be my action, and my bonus action will be to go back into configuration form, use my last wild shape, and um, stand up to these people. You know, the establishment is okay. Never mind. We're done with that. Um, I'm just yeah, gonna stand down with the establishment. Uh, stand in front of Val over top of Al and like between her and Caliban fully renewed um 
but slightly ego ego is is worn away but they can't see that hopefully um and and, and like kind of tell val go just go get to the get the ship uh, uh homer pick us up homie um and uh we'll stand there and prepare to, to try to keep them busy while val gets to the ship yeah uh you you speaking you're communicating with say you know homer come pick us up and uh Val, you, you open your eyes, you, you see this happening after you regained consciousness. And through all of your comms, you hear Homer say, All might. And then it cuts out as all of you see a large flash above you. And you see the Odyssey get hit with a <gasps> massive uh, blast from above. And then another. And then another. And then another. And a rapid succession of blasts come from a a black shape, a, a massive war bringer heavy cruiser that has just entered the atmosphere, very Star Destroyer-like, uh, hovering from above as it just batters the Odyssey. And you see the ship start to smoke and flame from the hits it's taken, and you don't hear Homer anymore and you watch as the Odyssey starts to tilt in the sky and then it falls rapidly into the ocean below the raft. And Caliban looks to all of you and says, I'm not sorry that we had to do this. I warned you that we were going to call in some friends and you all had your chance. And you watch as several uh, other craft break off from this Warbringer from above, and these uh, dropships start to come down. And as you, you look up at this craft, you realize that you've seen one like it before, maybe even this one. And this is the same craft that decloaked and fired on Volkrieg's ship right before you made your rift jump. And you're all out of initiative now. Um, I, I will say that um, this will be kind of cutscene like, uh, but you all can do something if you would like. But uh, you see, Red finally uh, gets himself onto the uh, platform of the deck. He's still flanked by the, the Vect and the, the Hobgoblin. And uh, he looks up and looks at all of you and goes, you all do and you all watch as these drop ships descend and land on the platform and in moments you are all surrounded by dozens of the same type of, of soldiers that uh, that you encountered on the mall in, in the first session and a, uh, an unarmored individual like the, the one you saw in a long black trench coat um, kind of walks towards um, Red and he extends his hand and they shake and he, he turns towards his men and says take them in and uh, you all see that he, unlike uh, many of the other soldiers, is actually wearing a, an emblem um, most of these, these soldiers are unidentified their, their craft doesn't have any clear markings on it, it's all just this, this kind of sheen black on, on everything, even their armor uh, but his emblem, his his patch, um, has a hand uh, with an eye at the center. And you can see that right below it, uh, it has the acronym V-E-C-M-A. And you all know that these are the, the boogeymen of the verse. That they're, this is the rumored dark special forces of the human hegemony. These are the hand and I of Vecna. Motherfuckers. We'll call that for a session. No. Wait, I just want it to be known that um, as everyone's dropping down, I'm going to take the leash off Lockjaw and try and shoo him away and get okay. him out of harm's way. Yeah. Um, you, you feel the, the leash kind of go loop and you, you hear just a pitter patter as, as Lockjaw kind of goes running off. Go, boy! Get out of here! <laughs> Paul said we can't keep you no more. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely want Zama to look out towards the water as the as our ship is going down and just like realize that Homer was trying to like listen to us and save us and just. Yeah. Homer. It's be very sad. Did yeah. we see the ship exactly explode? Uh, you did not see it explode, but so um, in theory, the repair drones might be able to save it. Or would it be like a far-fetched belief this bitch that Homer underwater. could pull through? Well, I mean, it's a spaceship, so like, I'll go get it. In theory, it might be okay. Uh, he doesn't need to breathe. Taylor, I want that on his shirt. This bitch underwater. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sell that at every beach shop. Um, put that on every submarine. The thing uh, about spaceships is that they're not exactly built to withstand immense amounts of pressure because space, fair. and it's about to sink into an ocean planet. Yeah. Tell that to Star Wars. No. Um, yeah. Uh, your, Space your religion sure. isn't necessarily very good at science. Uh, you have insulted my religion. Both your religions are no match for a blast yeah. your hip kid. Um, thank you, everyone, for for sticking around for so long. It's been an extra half hour, and for especially sticking around as we make pokey jokes uh, to <laughs> to try to deal with the 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 loss of of a lot. Um, but hey, I did that, and I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I did that. <laughs> um, I hope I caused you all a lot of pain, and um, I will, I'll never apologize. Uh, I uh, thank you all uh, for, for staying with us, for, for coming to a, another episode of Adventures in the Verse, and uh, I think we had a good time. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the story. Uh, we have lots more to do. This is not the end, and uh, I have a lot more planned these individuals in addition to the things that they have planned that i could not even uh, imagine or hope for. um things to to derail every one of my linear plot lines which i absolutely love um so we'll go ahead and go around i will have these amazing amazing people uh tell you about themselves and where you can find them should you want to follow them or see them do other stuff or some great stuff so we'll start as we often do with taylor my plan is to cry. Good plan. Just throwing it out there. I'm Taylor. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Lives and Lemons. You can find me here also at Lives and Lev Lemons. Oh, my brain. Guys, it's past my bedtime. On Twitch, there are underscores. On Twitter, there are not. I tend to stream on Mondays and Thursdays. I do anything from Pokemon to making slime, and I'm thinking about starting a puzzle. I thought that would be fun. So come and join me. We have a cozy time. That sounds awesome. I love puzzles. I will I will be there. I hope to see you there too. Uh, next up, let's hear from Graham. Hey everybody, I'm Graham, or Graham Crackers. Uh, you can find me on Fridays at my own channel, Twitch TV slash Graham Crackers with a Z, uh, playing in the Goldshine Investigations, a mystery D&D 5e game in which a, I play a French tiefling paladin who is up to the, some good, kind of. Um, okay. Otherwise, you can find me on August 18th on Open for Adventure playing in the Iron Battalion one-shot. Uh, who I'll be playing, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody but you. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Maybe. That sounds awesome. I will be checking that out, too. Once again, hope to see you there. Uh, next up, Katie. Hello, I'm Katie Quixotic. You can find me everywhere as Katie Quixotic. Um, my stream schedule is a bit weird at the moment, but starting September 1st, I will be, um not working for a time so i will be streaming a lot more and i'll have an actual schedule and it'll be awesome but you should probably just follow me on twitter because that's where i'm gonna tell you where i'm gonna be even if it's kind of last minute that's where i'll tell you <laughs> um but yeah uh I, were we doing characters too no we were just doing where people can yeah, find us yeah. that's it we want. i'm val she almost died it's fine could be interesting conversations when she wakes back up and has a chance to talk to everyone yeah. i uh, really 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 expected a tpk by the way I really, really want to because like, ah, um, no, I was never going to kill <laughs> any of you. That's that's bad for everybody. It's bad for me. Um, no, uh, thank you, Katie. Yes, follow each and every one of these these uh, amazing people. Uh, watch them on Twitch. Watch the stuff that they do. They're all incredible folks. Uh, I will go ahead and do my stuff, and then Kyle will leave the, the rest for wrap up. 
Uh, but hi, everybody. I'm Derek Sword. I've been the one to uh, destroy your feelings today. Uh, I am, as always, your DM for these wonderful Saturday uh, Ventures in the Verse games. I love these people so much. They do uh, amazing, awesome things. And uh, I'm envious of every single one of them for the things that they do. But if you want to see stuff that I do, um, I'm here every Saturday, every other Tuesday, including this coming Tuesday. I am on Uncanny Adventures at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for their Call of Cthulhu Shadows Over Stillwater game, which is Call of Cthulhu set in the Old West. Uh, we've been killing some snake people in a cave. It's gotten weird. Come watch. Uh, every, uh, let's see. Nope, did the other Tuesday. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, or actually most social media, except for Facebook, because why? Uh, but for uh, Twitter, Twitch, and Discord, my username is dsword16. I do fun stuff on Twitter. I just posted a picture of a giant zucchini that I grew. That's fun. Uh, if you enjoy my humor at all, or monsters, uh, come listen to Monster Crush. It's a podcast that I do with my amazing friend, Hanneman, where we talk about different monsters, cryptids, um, spookums, and uh, whether they'd be good on a date or be a good romantic partner. So uh, come find out if uh, Mothman picks up the bill on your first date. Come find out if Bigfoot likes holding hands. Uh, come find out if Nessie's into butt stuff. It's all stuff we discuss. <laughs> um, that's where the podcasts are found. And if you enjoy it, uh, make sure you're, you're, you rate, review, and subscribe. And if you leave a, um, a review of any kind, even if it's one star and it's funny, I'll probably read it. Also, I want to give a shout out while I'm at it to Jillian of Midgard, who made the amazing character art for this game. And also this awesome shirt with the Displacer Beast logo that looks like if your high school mascot was Displacer Beast, if it was, let me know. Um, she does awesome stuff uh, in addition to the people on this channel who do awesome stuff. Uh, Taylor has her awesome channel. Graham's an amazing role player. They're all actually amazing role players. Uh, and Katie makes these incredible flower crowns. This is a different one from the one that I had last week because I got my wife too, because that's how great they are. And I wear them sometimes too, just to feel pretty. <laughs> Um, so if, if you like that sort of thing, reach out to Katie. Follow her. Like I said, follow everybody on Twitter. They're all clever and funny and supportive. Graham just tells everyone that he loves them at all times. It's it's great stuff. Um, so yes, check them all out. And uh, of course, we couldn't even do this this game uh, and we couldn't have this channel without Kyle, uh, who is uh, an amazing amazing person. I will leave it, Kyle T. Oh, thank you. And I love, yes, I love the way the crown uh, accents your every feature. Um, yes, and they, they are all, uh, awesome crowns. And unfortunately, I will be the one out of the bunch who is not awesome on Twitter because I'm a weirdo, old weirdo person who does not use social media much, except for to announce games. I'm boring. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Derek. And thank you so much for making me look forward to Saturdays because Saturdays used to be a very shitty day for me, or just at least boring. I would just sit in front of the computer and click, 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 uh, play games all day and with no social interaction. But you bring this amazing stories uh, for me and everyone else to enjoy. Uh, and thank you so much, everybody else, um, all my other players, uh, Katie, Graham, and Taylor. Thank you so much for, for joining us here. I'm so glad Derek Derek brought you guys in to, to play and I hope to, to get to play with other communities as well here soon, too, and meet all these other awesome people that you guys uh, keep talking about. And I'm always anxious to, you know, to not anxious, but excited to to get uh, to get to know new people in the TTRPG community, especially ones who aren't, um, you know, bad people. So um, so it's uh, yeah, it's it's always good to to get out there. I love this so much fun. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us and uh, coming and hanging out with us and enjoying our adventure. Um, I need to, uh, all our episodes are technically on YouTube as of this morning, though I need to go through and like copy paste the descriptions and the titles and all that crap. So everything will be caught up tomorrow as far as um, the last few that I haven't updated yet, but they're there, they're there. They'll be there soon. So you can catch up with our adventures in the verse then. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next Saturday for the next episode very excited more stuff to come going on in the background i'm waiting to see what my kids school schedule is going to be like here coming soon to uh till i decide to pick up a third or fourth uh fourth show on the channel um and to see what's going on you know you know just gotta keep your keep your eye on the ever-changing landscape here and uh thank you everyone so much for joining us uh check out the youtube channel check out our discord community all that good stuff 
And until next time, unity is strength. So stand together, stay safe, and we'll see everyone next time. Have a great week.